And now, Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. No reading, no research, just strong opinions. <laughs> All right, what's up, man? Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa. Like the intro just said, you're listening to Uninformed, the first Uninformed since uh, back in May. Jesus. Are those chicks just going to keep singing there? I never heard it that long. I never heard the music for that long. Yeah. I like it. That's like when you used to watch Welcome Back, Carter. You know, and at the end of the show, every once in a while, you'd catch that second verse. They yeah. had a short episode. Remember the first time you heard that song, like, on the radio? You're like, holy shit, that's the whole song. Yeah, the whole song. Yeah. Incredible. Great song. Yeah. It's Who a great song, that? Joe. Was that Joe Cocker? Uh, no, that, he no. sang the Wonder Years song. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. What would you do? If I hey, that wasn't, that wasn't the Wonder Years. That was the John Belushi greatest hits. No, that was the beginning of the Wonder Years. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. It was eight, eight is enough. <laughs> All right, douche. I'm a douche. You watched the Wonder Years. Did you have a crush on that girl? No, I actually... With the mermaid hair? I know the Wonder Years. I was not a big fan of it because I couldn't relate to it. It was not the way my growing up... Uh, it didn't replicate that in any way, so I didn't I didn't like it that much. You know what? You, you were talking about... Uh, Somebody aging well, yeah, or not a somebody aging well. Talk about not aging well was uh, Fred Savage, and I can't figure out why either. He's not out of shape. He, I th he just looks like a an adult him, <laughs> which is what he's supposed to look like. But he didn't change. He didn't get any scruff. He just, I thought he aged well. I thought he looked kind of like I've seen him in a couple movies where he's playing like a dirt ball, and I didn't recognize him. And I was like, holy shit, that's Fred Savage. Do you know when the last time I saw him was? Was when he had his sitcom Working. In yeah. uh, the late 90s. I remember Which that. I actually booked a part on. He's... Did you? I did. I booked a part on it, and then I had... But I, I, I only booked two parts in L.A., and I booked both of them in the same week, and I had to choose between between uh, working in some other failed sitcom, and I picked the other one. I, I should have gone with the working one. Well, working failed, too. That only lasted a season or something, right? Yeah, but my part got cut way down in the other one. Well, they probably would have cut it down... <laughs> Too and working because they would have had a. Oh, thanks. You must. I that, can finally let that go then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really happened. And once they saw me acting, they'd be like, yeah. "You know, we got, we're, gonna, we're gonna cut his part down a little bit." Bill, the kid that played Paul is gonna do a guest role this week, so we're gonna cut your lines down. Do was little. that you like doing a character? He like totally, totally totally lost me on that one. That was my uh, producer character, Bill. We're gonna cut your lines down. All right. Because uh, we're going to have a guest star role. Yeah, you're still an integral part. All right, let's let's get down to the show here. Uh, if if you've, if you're uh, a big fan of this show, one of the twelve people who listens to this show, uh, me and Joe, one of the, one of the uh, I don't know, the nucleus of this show is you and me arguing. Yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> you're really pissing me off. Why? I'm not. I, I don't know why. No, you're just trying. Don't. I know because I feel like I'm holding up this end of it. Don't you're not holding force, up your end. I'm holding it up. Don't force the fight. Don't. I'm not forcing the what, fight. But when I what, say something to you, don't just go like. I've got. Yeah. But that wasn't me being standoffish. That was me being like, I know what we're going okay. into, and I'm a. And I'm. It makes me sad. What Bill's getting at is that Bill and I have taken a little step back from the booze. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mentioned to him this morning. He's been staying with me for the last couple days. We haven't argued once. There's been no tension. There's been no... Nothing. Very peaceful. Yeah. Basically, when, when did you... I quit drinking uh, two weeks ago. I have not had a drop. That's not true. I had one, one pasta dish that had a little wine in it, but that doesn't count. No. I, hate, I hate when alcoholics do that. Is, is there any alcohol in this when they're eating lasagna? Oh, uh, yeah. Why? Do you, think you're fucking... gonna, do you think you're going to eat the whole tray, you fucking moron? Yeah. I can't stop. I'll just... Yeah. I'll I always wanted to do pot. that. When I lived with Bobby Kelly, he was, he was, he was big on that, you know? The whole alcohol ruined my life, so I'd give him like a fudgical. Be like, dude, dude, is there any alcohol in that? Shut I was, up, I was Bobby. just wanted to spike one. He was sober by the time he was thirteen. That doesn't count. I don't like people like that. I got, I got fifteen years sober. You stopped and, uh, drinking when you were twelve. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I know it ruined my life, man. I got a divorce in seventh grade. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> Couldn't hold down a job. Oh. Twelve years old, couldn't hold down a job. Yeah. I, I, I had sixty people on my paper route, and then I found the bottle. I uh, I used to bring the paper right up to the door. I watched that paper route dwindle. Sixty, fifty, forty, thirty. 
Uh, it's down ridiculous. to 20 before you knew it. Yeah, uh, if there's any alcoholics, li- uh, listen, I-, I understand how, you know, I mean, they're alcoholics, man. They literally, to the point, like, you can't even, seriously, you can't even give them, <laughs> you can't even give them, like I said, a trail of lasagna if it's got a drop of, of anything, cooking wine, yeah. stuff that a, a bum would drink. <laughs> they, you know, like, that doesn't burn off in there. They start freaking out. Dude, the amount of times I saw Bobby's stupid face have a panic look like, Dude, dude, is it alcohol in this? I'm like, no, no. And he goes, oh, good, good, good. 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 I'll eat six of them then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This isn't fair. He's not here to defend himself. This really isn't. I love him. If he's... Yeah, Bobby, well, if you're doing a road gig right now and you got XM and you're driving from, uh, whatever, Skmogoygan. Poughkeepsie to Sea Caucus. Yeah. All those awful... Uh, All those Indian names. That's so hilarious. We massacred and then named, named <laughs> cities after them. That's our little tribute. I did a club up in Poughkeepsie a couple, it's probably a couple of months ago at this point. I was going to say a couple of weeks ago because I thought we had done a, an episode. Well, I thought just the, 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 the boredom of not drinking makes the, I mean, Jesus, I can't believe how many fucking hours are in a day. It's horrible. I was off for uh, 16 days and then... Um, I had a couple drinks because I taped my uh, my Comedy Central presents or whatever. So uh-huh. I had a couple drinks after that to to celebrate, and then I had a couple drinks last night, which by the time this airs will be a week and a half or a month ago, whenever the fuck this is. <laughs> so you're basically still on. on the. You're not like on. You're kind of like you're hanging on to the wagon, and your awful Egyptian feet are yeah. dragging in the dirt. Well, I'll tell you what. Both times I drank, I, I can't believe it. I didn't enjoy it. I eat, when I started to get buzzed and stuff, I all. I wasn't enjoying the sensation. All I could keep thinking about was I'm going to feel like shit tomorrow. I just didn't like and it. And you know what's it funny about shitty. that? That's that's making me angry on some level. Why? That, that you're not enjoying it. It sucked. I was I was a little upset about it myself. Do you know how bad I want you to fall off the wagon, Joe? Mm-hmm. So I'll feel I won't feel as bad when I do. Well, you don't want to fall off that bad. You could have drank with me this week. You didn't. That's only because I had a bunch of radio to do to hype my special. To do. I hit my special. Well, that, that will already have aired by the time this comes out. What are you out. doing tonight, Bill? Huh? <laughs> what are you doing tonight? What am I doing tonight? Um, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to try to white knuckle my way through this. Uh, no, I'm not. I, I, we, go ahead. I'm just I saying. I wasn't going to say anything. You made a face like I was going to make funny. I wasn't going to make funny. Wait. First, let me just ask you this. How, how many How many days did you did you make it? I just want to beat you. This is my 16. guy. 16. 16. All right. I'm at 14. You're not at 14 yet. Yes, I am. You are? I thought I you am. weren't at 14 till the weekend. No. The time when I left that horrific message <laughs> on your phone was, uh, was, was two weeks ago this Thursday night. You fucking douche. That message this, was as bad as like the story of like, I woke up covered in blood. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I quit drinking. I was in a warehouse. Do, do we, do we, did you record that? Did we record that, that message? No, we can though. And then... Can you can you can we hit pause we right just, here? Just edit this out. Just, just fucking, just hit pause right now. Why, why why didn't we record that? Danny, can we just play it into the mic? I have speakerphone. Of course we. Can. You know we did this fucking thing at a. Uh, you know what? Don't edit any of this out. This is a little behind the scenes for you. At fucking, we did this thing over at Serious Serious the other day. And we, we started talking about this, and I said, can we play the thing into the phone? Fu- no, there's no way you can play the phone into the mic. It'll sound horrible. Oh, you just said you're That's how we would record it. Oh, oh, you. Hey, this is XM. This is the Opie and Anthony studio. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. All right, so here's, I believe this is the message here. How nuts was that guy, though? We, we, did, we did one hour. Um, for, the, for those of you listening, I, I have a, a one-hour special coming out. Uh, it's going to be it probably already came out by the time this thing airs. Definitely right, August thirty-first. Uh, called "Why Do I Do This?" So basically, I was uh, I was over there to promote it, Danny, and they gave us an hour of radio to do. And this dude who was doing your job, like producing the show, it was like ridiculous. Like he explained to me for like twenty minutes how to take a phone call. Like this uh, is you are, what you want to do is you know, blah 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 blah. And I'm literally sitting there, like I, I know how to take a phone call. Even before I did radio, I know yeah. how to do it. You and know? then he said, and up, then he said like, he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, here's what you got to do with the listeners. You got to ask them something, but then don't, and then cut them off. And he's like telling us how to like conduct the fucking phone. Like, like there are rules to a phone call. Shut. Which I appreciate it, but there was one uh, of these guys. I who, didn't. You get it within the first 
eight seconds, the first sentence, and then he repeats the same well, sentence like 20 times. You guys have probably done enough radio to the point where you just know that from observation in the first place. Right. So. I'd love to hear his side of the story. They were completely <laughs> bombing on him. <laughs> they looked like they needed help. He was a nice enough guy, but he was just bugging me. All right, Joe, you, 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 you have a message, message right here. Before you play it, can, can I at least tell the story? Yeah. All right, this is what happened my last my last night of drinking. This this is this is basically why I quit, Joe. Was I was uh, or t took a hiatus, take an inventory. <laughs> I uh, I was down in uh, I was at this club. I'm just gonna remain nameless. All right. And uh, I can't believe I'm gonna tell this story. I hope they don't they don't have fucking XM here. Um, <laughs> anybody in this story better not have XM, or I'm gonna get a fucking letter. Basically, what happened was I was. <laughs> I've already said when the gig was, so they're going to be able to do the math. Fuck it. I'm saying it. I basically did this gig, right? It was the um, the end of the night, and, and this, this couple, who I guess I had partied with the last time I was down there, which I didn't remember. So I already, but when I came to town, I'm like, dude, I'm not drinking this week. You know, you just say when you come to town, uh, yeah. right? I'm eating lettuce. I'm doing sit-ups. Yeah. I'm going to come home. I'm going to be shredded, right? <laughs> I'm going to write jokes every night, you know? Next yeah, thing you, you know. treat it like prison. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're hammered, jerking off the tube eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad, dude. It's pathetic, right? So basically, I get off stage, all right, and they're already sitting there, and they already got. Let, I was drinking Jameson last time I was there, so they already have one ready for me, and I'm, you know, signing my CDs, whoring myself out, and they're like, "Hey, Bill, we already got a drink for you." So I'm sitting, you know, I don't want to be a jerk, right? You know what I mean? Like I hate when like uh, somebody buys me a drink and I go, oh, "I can't have that," then they think you, you know, right? Oh, what, are you too big for me? Yeah. Can't drink Coors Light anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably some awful beer. So I'm like, all right. So I go over there and I drink one. Of course, I got to have a beer chaser, right? <sighs> then they get me another one. They're shooting the shit. Ah, uh, you know, the guy's girl is, you know, she's a little whorish. Right. The alcohol's kicking in. She's got tattoos. And the night's on. Next thing you know, he's like, oh, yeah, I work at a bar down the street. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> We're down the street. Next there thing you know, you more Jameson, boom, 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 hammered and all this. I, dude, I'm really getting paranoid that they have XM. Like, I don't know if I can. Well, well, the story basically ends. I just She tells me she's not wearing any <laughs> panties. Okay? Jesus the Christ. dude is like five feet away. She's showing me she's not wearing panties. Of course. So then in my hammered state, I look over to the other comic I'm with. I'm like, eh, she just showed me her clam, eh, all this stuff. And then her, her, whatever he is, sticks his head in between the two of us. And he's like, what happened? What's going on? And I immediately went, oh, I just put up this chin-up bar in my house. And I tried to play it off. <laughs> then she gets, I swear to God, then she gets all, and I'm wasted, dude. She gets, and then she gets all in my face with like this red wine breath. She's like, come on, you got to kiss me. You gotta kiss me. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to kiss you. She goes, I just showed you my clam. Whatever. She didn't say clam, whatever. She my goes, clam. you gotta kiss me. And I go, I'm not gonna kiss you. Your boyfriend is like two feet away. Dude, it was brutal. Then she, then she walks off and now she's over there having a little powwow with him. So as the comedian is talking to me, I'm acting like I'm listening, but I'm really watching this other dude uh, waiting for the glass up to the side of my head, yeah. which I totally deserve at this point. And, uh, the last thing I remember her was walking up, <laughs> asking me if I had any coke. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, <laughs> so they end, they end up leaving. Now, mind you, I have to get up in like four hours to do radio. They end up leaving. Ugh. I was just gonna have one, and now I'm still there. I'm like, yeah, hey, let's have another one. And I stayed there for like another three. Ugh. Dude, I had I think I had like nine. How nine. did you get up for radio? That's the worst part of the story uh, to me. Because I'm a company <laughs> man, Joe. I guess like in the, like the next day, like the, the guy I was working was like, dude, do you even remember any of that? Like, do you remember when we went? Do you remember when we went to go get pizza? I was like, no, I don't even remember anything after leaving the bar. Evidently, I went into the pizza parlor, and the the the, the uh, host or the feature act, he met some chick there. So I guess he already knew her, and he was trying to close the deal with her. And I was hammered. I thought he just met her, Ugh. so I was just like, he killed tonight. <laughs> he was hilarious. That guy killed. Who was the feature act? That saw uh, no, you. there's there's no names in this story. In this state, this poor kid. That I'll tell you off air. There's, there's there's no. Oh, dude, come on, man. We we <laughs> laughed the whole weekend. I don't give a shit, right? So then, basically, what ended up happening was unbeknownst. Now at this point, I'm completely blacked out. I don't remember any of this. And evidently, I went back to my hotel room. You got you got the message ready? Yep. And I drunk dialed Joe DeRosa, because at this point, I think I was already taking stock in my life that 
I can't, I can't do this anymore. And uh, this message is more embarrassing than anything he did in that story. This is just so. <laughs> it's just so, Danny. You know when you just see something and you, and you go, "That's so fucking gay." Yeah, and you get the douche chills, and you feel like you can't listen. Yeah. Right? So, well, you better put you better like homosexual like. You better gay. put a coat on for this one. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get. Right, I'm gonna see. cure global warming with these douche chills. Here it is. <laughs> Miami is the devil's armpit. I'm drunk, and I just spoke some truth in my own reality. <laughs> uh, oh, what does that even mean? Fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta admit, dude, for eight Jameson, nine Jam I'm not I'm not slurring too much. I don't even know what, you know what that in my drunk mind was? I had made up my mind that was the last time I'm going to be involved in that situation. I already felt, I already felt, ho dude, I felt horrible. Dude, you know what it was? It was one of those deals where that couple, like their relationship was falling apart. Like that, and, and you just ended up being that the catalyst to probably, they, they probably broke up after that night. I'm so happy that I missed that phone call. Why, I, dude? You could have kept me on and we, I wouldn't even have to do a show. I couldn't have recorded it. There was no way for me to record it, and I just would have been cornered with your drunk fucking, you know. Ay, ay, <laughs> you show me a clam. You show me a clam. And then that would have spiraled into some theory about the country. That's just wrong with this country. <laughs> they're they going to bankrupt it. <laughs> they're showing us clams to distract us from what's really going on. I gotta admit, I don't think it, I don't think it's that bad. It's definitely douchey, but like when you do the way you the way you hyped it up to me, man, I, I thought I talked for five minutes. That was a nice, quick little. No, it was a quick, but you just, straight right of douche chills uh, right uh, to your grill. As I said, the, the, the just the air of of pride and confidence in your voice that you really just said something. That's the worst part of it. You you can hear that you're like, yeah, man, I just I said it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, he fucking. <laughs> oh, God. 40 years old. I'm 40 years old, and I left that. I mean, that's the kind of message you leave sophomore, maybe end of freshman year in college. I mean, that is just pathetic. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's yeah, so, great. anyways, uh, so, anyways, people listening at this point who haven't just like projectile vomited with that, that message, uh, yeah, that was it. And the next day I woke up, Joe, and I felt I felt so bad. I mean, if the people who are listening, man, I, I apologize for my behavior. I'll take 50 percent of that. OK, you know what I mean? <clears throat> my, my half of that. I apologize, man. I, my behavior was ridiculous. And uh, and I am not sober. They're not listening. Don't worry. You're in the clear. You're in the clear. Uh, They're not listening. Nobody's listening, Bill. <laughs> we can say whatever we want here. <laughs> <laughs> you can confess to a murder. Right now wouldn't make a bit of fucking difference, <laughs> unless. Uh, I'm Joe, not, how about how about a little show energy? Cut me off. I'm having a great time. We're oh, okay. talking. It's nice. You, All right. You said it. You said right before we went on. You want to do the easy listening, comfortable show. That's what I'm doing. You know why? And people don't get up. We, we are going to argue at some point during the show, but we don't even have a fucking guest. The the, the whole thing fell apart. I don't know. I don't know what happened. A bunch of st stuff jumped around. Danny, right? <laughs> Danny at the last second on Wednesday, right? We were supposed to tape this on Sunday. On yeah. Wednesday, he leaves a message. Guys, I'm so, capital S-O, sorry. Yeah. Well, I thought I was supposed to have... Can we tape this tomorrow? Yeah, well, there was there was supposed to be some, some big-time Labor Day weekend plans. Yeah, they was going on a canoeing trip. What happened? You know, things changed. Ah, everything got all... Everything got all... All foobar. Where, where are we going to go? Uh, there was supposed to be a little Mohegan trip. That's well, not, that's not Why place. did I think you were going to go rafting? Yeah, that's what I thought too. I just immediately just pictured Why like, do I come a, a Coors Light. <laughs> I come off as the outdoorsy type. <laughs> no, you don't. But you, I don't know. Something about him. I pictured him in sandals, and he had annoying like hairy toes. <laughs> Why so are like, you not going now? To make a very long story short, avail. We thought there was going to be some availability, and the availability is not what we thought it was going to be. You didn't make reservations. You no, were like, it's more than that. I'm not nobody's gonna going to Mohegan yeah, it's, Sun. It's, you're not going to get. Was it you, about cunt, Danny? No. Did you think there was going to no, be no, some no, cunt? No, no. Jesus, no. Joe. <laughs> no. I was supposed to. I was going to hang out with, with with a fancy man, 
And usually fancy men get fancy accommodations. <laughs> oh, and there was no fancy accommodation. And there, was no fa there was no fancy accommodation. What the fuck are you guys talking about? <laughs> I don't. I literally don't understand. Is he speaking you... code? Yeah. You know, you, know, you, know, you know, you had the Birdman and Alcatraz. Can I guess, or is it bad for me to guess? No, you can guess. We, we, you didn't get the drugs you needed or something? No. Oh, what? <laughs> what are you talking about, Coke? Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, that is slang for Coke, isn't it? Fancy what, man. I got, fancy. I got a little packet of fancy man. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I was, I was supposed to go, somebody has some pull Chi -chi, over there. get the fancy man. Oh, and you were supposed to get, like, the top suite and all that bullshit? Well, no, but there was, you know, hey, who likes driving? Not me. Right. Not fancy people. Yeah. So, you know, the, the private plane was kind of booked up. So. <laughs> Dude, Danny, what the fuck are you talking about? Joe, Joe. Joe, I'm telling you exactly what I'm it. saying. He coded it. He's the... supposed to go to Mohegan Sun with the fancy man. <laughs> he thought the fancy man had a little more credit than he did. Turns out he didn't. <laughs> no, it's just... It was so all... now the fancy it's man's a... going... And the the popper isn't. No, it's a busy weekend. Fancy man's not going either. There was just no uh, there was no spots, so now no Fancy one's going. Fancy man didn't have uh, plans. No, it was to kind of like a last entertain the, was, the kingdom. Yeah, Do you really understand thing. what he's talking about? Yeah. Am I really this dense? You don't know who the fancy man is? No, I have no idea what he's. Fancy man has one of the has a best selling book. I can't believe you don't know that. No. Didn't he? Oh, you guys are just you just. I, really I guess did. I'm not. I guess I'm not explaining this correct. Here, I'll just I'll just tell all you guys, and then I'll edit it out later. <laughs> Supposed to go to Mohegan with Ant. We had this whole thing planned. Oh, right, out. I picked the wrong guy. I yeah, I was yeah, yeah. Now, why would I with uh, Ant? Well, since when is Jimmy a big Mohegan gambler? But I thought he was the fancy man. <laughs> and then what happened? Everybody's fancy. Uh, well, because he's he 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 won so much there once that they offered him the the the, the plane. So he could just fly there whenever he wants. In other okay. words, they're trying to get their money back. Exactly. Well, why so, is that so secret? Why couldn't you just say that? Well, because I don't want to be like I'm bragging, like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to, not, supposed to take the plane with Ant, because me and Ant hang out all the time. So the, I don't even know who Ant is. Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Oh, Ant. <laughs> Jesus, you would, you would be the worst cop, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I didn't know you called him Ant. How do you do on Wheel of Fortune? It's like everything but the last letter. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Bread in the basque. Uh. He's like Peter Griffin when he was on Wheel of Fortune. He's like asking for the Batman symbol as a consonant. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. You can leave that in. That's a funny. That's unless Anthony wouldn't appreciate it. No, that's <laughs> fine. But uh, so we were supposed to. We were going to take the 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 Mohegan jet. Oh, that's but, cool. Uh, there was no spots. There was no spots on the plane. It was a busy, busy weekend, so things got all fucked up. We were going to switch days, but then that wasn't available. It was just oh, that's mess. cool. That's very well. It sucks that that fell through. Yeah, yeah. But now, hey, I, now I get to be here with you guys. Yeah, on this ripping show. <laughs> hey, well, I just told a story that meant nothing to nobody with zero jokes in it. I know, and it took, us, it took us off <laughs> and topic. And it took a very long time to well, get there. It took us off topic. I was talking to him. because because it's still on topic to invite da Danny. could spend Labor Day weekend with us in a no-drinking, boredom fucking stupid. No, there has to dude, be Dude, I can tell you right now, Joe, if the rest of the show goes like this, I'm getting hammered in the final hour. Oh, dude, all I can think about right now is going to Playwrights tonight with you and sitting in that corner. And dude, let's talk about them. Let me talk. You know what let's, I think we should do, since, the, since this is a very alcohol-related show so far? I say that I'll I will go to Dwayne Reed and I'll get a six pack and I'll just put it in the middle of the console and yep. let's just see how long it takes for one of you let's know, do it. to lunge at it. Let's do it. I'm serious. Let's do <laughs> All it. Right. Run let's down. see if your willpower is as good as as you guys think it is. Run down. You're on. Bill's on 14 okay. days. Joe's on 16 days. I'll get. I'll yeah, get. Just, just, just to make it more day. interesting, make them talls. All right. I'll six talls. pack of talls and we'll just see if you guys could if you guys could can wait it out. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. All right. During the break, once we take a break, I'll run out and get. I'll run out and get. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we got a hook, Joe. We got a hook. That We've means got you got a, a show. Hook. See, Joe, guys. I swear to God, if you don't stop doing that De Niro impression, <laughs> that, that's the one thing he he does everything. It's either De Niro or Seinfeld. He's driving me nuts. <laughs> He's driving me nuts. He doesn't even. He doesn't do. even sound like him. I know, but it's just fun to do. It's just fun to. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Joe. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> uh, How bored are you, dude? Not drinking. I'll, I'll tell you right oh, now. So fucking boring, dude. And by Is the it, way, Joe, you're doing you're doing uh, Pacino from uh, from The Devil's Advocate with that. 
with that. What is it? Why would you make him go back into it? Well, because his, his in his inflection, the way he's delivering it, it sounds like that that Pacino speech at uh, the end where he's like, "Drink, but uh, be thirst, but don't drink. Look, but don't touch." Where he best. goes on for about fucking forty five seconds with that whole analogy of <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> the best line of that movie is is uh, when Keanu Reeves goes, where, he goes to his apartment. He goes, "There's no bed. Where does he sleep?" And somebody goes, he doesn't sleep. And he goes, where does he fuck? And Pacino goes, everywhere! <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if he was great in that movie or if he was abysmal in that movie. I think he's I, awesome. I, can't, I, can't I, I bought it. I bought him as the devil. I, I Front to back, I bought it. Ugh. I liked it. You don't like that movie, Bill? What a surprise. It, it, Bill doesn't it, like it, something. It, <laughs> Dude, I told you I love Batman. <laughs> I loved it. I Heath like, Ledger was you're unbelievable. That. You've been milking uh, that for a fucking uh, month now. I love No Country for Old like Men. That I, I love like. that uh, movie about the guy who struck oil. <laughs> that uh, uh, <laughs> No Blood for uh, Old Cunts. No Country for Old Men and uh, First Blood, whatever the fuck it was, with uh, Left Foot Lewis there. I can never remember the names. What the hell is his name? Daniel Day Lewis. He won it this year for uh, There Will Be Blood. Best actor. That was a great movie. Okay, his I'm sorry, Joe. His speech was annoying, wasn't it? His Oscar, Oscar acceptance. Joe, it's annoying that you actually watched an award show. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Did you have a slumber party? He was trying to do credit. No, 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 to no. no. Let, let's what? go back to you watching the award show. Okay. Who, did you go to an Oscar party? Well, what we do is uh, we ball up little pieces of paper. You do. You have a pool. <laughs> Somebody tells me my that wild card, Francis McDermott. <laughs> I absolutely loved her in that movie, The Apron. <laughs> that's, what, that's always the name of one of those fucking awful independent films. The Apron. Starring <laughs> Francis McDermott. The doing period. an accent that no one gives a shit about. I hate period movies. I can't stand them. Oh, they're terrible. Yeah, they're so messy. Uh, I hate anything where somebody climbs on a horse. Wow, you should be... He just goes, they're so <laughs> messy. I, I heard him. I, I glazed over I was hoping over. everybody was just going to plow over it. <laughs> you had no confidence. No. He whispered it. I, uh, yeah, anything with a horse... And a fucking cab. Powdered wigs. I'm done. Oh, those are the worst. Yeah, because with a horse, at least it can be a western. You got a you got a shot at it being decent, but powdered wig. Oh, oh my god. Are those you know what that is? But that, that's like for actors. That's like the alternative comedy of like acting. Like they think that that's like uh, this amazing thing. Yeah. To go back and uh, actually, it is. It's just boring to me. It's so, bo dude. Could you could you imagine having to sit through the remains of the day? That movie or like. Uh, I, I never even heard of that. Or like, you know, Anne of Green Gables or fucking... What about that movie, oh, uh, 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 Quilt? That Quilt movie. Oh, an American was? Quilt? Yeah. How to Make an American Quilt or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Is that what it is? Who who would see that? Like, who would put that money behind that? Like, that's got to be something I just, I just Remember, love. I love film. I just, I just <laughs> love it, noir. I mean, talk about... Remember when, uh, remember when Gettysburg came out? That movie Gettysburg? Oh, my God. It was like a four-hour fucking... I love the black and white, the Art Deco period of Manhattan just stands out in the background. Ugh, just, ugh. How well, bad do their, their feet stink? People like that. He says people, those brown loafers who just have those VCR tapes stacked up to the ceiling, and they watch all those old Humphrey Bogart movies, which yeah. I actually like his stuff, but... Yeah, but those movies don't bother me. How condescending was that? I like his stuff. I'm pretty bogus. Okay, that fucking screen legend. <laughs> those movies don't bother me. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about period pieces. I'm not talking about old movies. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Some other people might want to take the conversation a different way. Let's get back to you Okay. your period pieces. That's a good idea. No, Name I mean, five. I'm having a hard time Name right Name five period pieces. The Remains of the Day. Revolution. Uh, quills. Uh... Dude, dances with wolves. Go fuck yourself. That's not a period piece. Yes, it that's is. That's a western. They, no, that's it's not. That's a western. Come on, Danny. A period piece is 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 fucking uh, powdered wigs, like Pride and Prejudice. That would be like yeah. a period Pride piece. Pride and Prejudice. Well, no. A Ebenezer's period, Quagmire. A period piece is any movie about a period that has passed. Like you can do an '80s movie and it's considered a period piece. No, it isn't. Yes, it is, Bill. No, the '80s is a period in history, but they they don't call it a period piece. Yes, they do. I've seen it in breakdowns. They absolutely fucking do. No, they don't. They'll say period piece '80s, 1980s. I've seen that. Yes, they do. Don't big time me. <laughs> don't fucking big time me with you. I've seen it in breakdowns. I can't believe you backed off. That was almost a fucking argument. It What's that? Been. That could have been an argument. That about was the what? start of an argument about the period pieces. 
That could have been an argument. We almost were getting into an argument there. We for were her. arguing. You bailed out, though. I didn't bail. You I, I like, picked on the fact that all of a sudden you're like, I've seen any breakdowns. Like, when you went, don't big time me, that was like funny and like charming, and it ruined the argument. Well, if you really want the exact definition of period piece, I can give it to you. It is boring movies starring uh, jo- <laughs> that dude, who, that chick who married that guy Anything from Daniel fucking Daniel Day Lewis. Jo- who's well, who's who's that that chick that used to bang Brad Pitt? And now she's married to that douche from oh, that band she can in go England. Fuck herself! That new movie she has coming out, Australia. Yeah. Oh, uh, with Hugh or her and Hugh Jackman. Na- yeah, named her kid Kiwi. We've got to win. <laughs> Oh, beat it. She's funny, though. You know, I like her because she trashed that airplane movie that, that bombed. It was a view from something. She said it should have been called view from my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was she in it? Think that's, yeah, she was in it. And I guess it sucked. And she knew it sucked. So she sucked it up. I guess she went through like, all the press junket. And then when it bombed. She was in that movie. I thought that was Gwyneth Paltrow in that movie. That's who I'm talking about. Gwyneth no, Paltrow was, no. is married to Coldplay. She wasn't fucking Tom Cruise. Nicole Kidman was fucking Tom Cruise. I didn't say Tom Cruise. I said Brad Pitt. I said Brad Pitt. Oh. Oh, <laughs> shit. All right. I got all screwed up there. Yeah. Nicole Kidman's in a new period piece called Australia. She always looks fucking horrible. She always looks like she needs to have like her temples massaged. Like, I, that's what I always want to do. Like, she just like, like she just, just got into a huge argument. What's the definition of period piece? Period, well, DeRosa was right. It's it's basically a, 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 just a work set in any particular era. It doesn't have to be Thank you, old-timey. Oh, but just that's what any, I said, though. That's what I said. Any no, period. it's not what you said. This is what I was saying, though. This is what I, this is what I meant was basically, yeah, anything that you, you set in another time is going to be technically... <laughs> wait a minute, Joe. It's also referenced it's, as it's, a costume drama. Is, is considered like a period piece, but they only use that expression. It's a period piece. Whenever they say that, there's some sort of fucking spinster and they're trying to find a witch. That was a nice way you weaseled out of your wrongness. But uh, I said 1980s could be a period name piece. Name one you said, no, it can't. fucking movie. You said, no, it can't. What, name, uh, what, what I meant was, geeks, name, name, freak, one, name the, one. Shut up. Name Judd one, Ab- I am. Judd you're Ab- not shutting up. I'm telling you to shut what? up. Name one movie from like, like that... Uh, I mean, when when that '70s show came out, did they say it's a period it's piece? It's considered a period piece. Yes. No, it isn't. You're wrong. You're just fucking wrong right okay, now. Okay, it's okay. Technically, it's consi- is it called that? Yes. In the history in a of the breakdown, show, breakdown it is. I mean, just because no, the isn't. public doesn't say. I fucking say read it. for that show. It never said period piece. Uh, you read for that '70s. Well, yes. I read for something that took place in the '80s and it said period piece. What do you want from me? That's you know what I, I want? Was... I want evidence. Well, I want evidence that that, that I said it show first. didn't say it. I said it first. You're accusing <laughs> no, me. No, you didn't. You, uh, <laughs> oh, it's the uh, it's that's terrible. Re- it's, it's driving me, do. dude. It's driving me it's insane. Just... <laughs> when we did that hour of radio over there, every other thing I said, if he didn't have a line, he would just do that. <laughs> like, I'm trying to hide to my. Go, yeah, I got my special coming out. I got my special coming out. <laughs> It's fun. It's fun to do. Danny enjoys it, I think, a little bit. A little bit. Oh, I just miss you guys. I miss you, too. You know what, Danny? I got to admit, I, I missed you, too. And I, I'm going to tell you, the Afro Wars, I, I got to put you... <laughs> well, you haven't you, seen you, Sam, you are at oh, a, you I saw Sam him this today. morning. He Danny was, uh, looks more and more like a painter every time I see him. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can have a smile. It really is at a, like an, <laughs> an Olympic level. <laughs> yeah, there's a few things I get a lot. I, I get, um, how's the uh, ACDC cover band coming along? Right. Ah, now. little Brian Johnson. That's right. Yeah, and I, I also am asked. Uh, I, I'm told I look like um, <clears throat> uh, the the bodyguard from Godfather Two when they ship him off to Italy to, be, to go <laughs> into hiding. <laughs> I'm like I'm his handler. <laughs> I get that a lot as well. Do you want to? I don't know. What, I don't know what he looks like now. You look like no, a, like, you look like a rogue cop in the seventies. Like, like, what's what's his Serpico really look like? <laughs> this is the tame. Real Serpico, the real, the real Serpico, the real Dottie Brasco. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is tame too because I showered just before I left the house. So, like, this is actually it's still kind of moist from from shower water. What are you growing it for? I, I just in like back in December, Ope was just like, let's just like grow our hair and just see how long we can go without cutting it. And no one did it except for like me and Sam, and we haven't stopped. Like, I won't, I won't cut my hair because he. I can't let him win it, and he won't cut his hair because he doesn't want me to be the last guy in. And so, what what is the prize at nothing, the end of it? It just the wearing the mane of a champion, as Sam likes to say. Take, take that's <laughs> that's the prize. Take your hat off. I want to see the top part. Well, I, I, it, it's going to look ridiculous because I had my I had my motorcycle helmet on Dang. when my hair was wet, so it's my hair is now shaped like a giant penis head. Uh, who cares? Well, we, and we want to see it. Can we put this on the web? Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at that part right down the middle like he's shimp. 
<laughs> well, like I said, I fucking threw my head, my helmet on right where my hair was still soaking wet. So <laughs> it's like the shape of the helmet. <laughs> Oh, dude, Danny looks like a Danny composer. looks like he looks like, a he looks like he is in a period piece, like he dyed a powdered yeah. wig Armadeus. and put it on his head. Danny Wolfgang Amadeus. Yeah, to me, Joe. I mean, I'm, I don't, I don't think I'm wrong on that. I really think that, like, generally he speaking, just Joe read the definition. I know, You're I know, wrong. but I'm saying when it's used, when it is used. Aside from the breakdowns and your behind the scenes inside shit, I'm just saying when a movie comes out and it takes place in the 1700s. Okay, nobody has ever called Clint Eastwood's all his westerns are called spaghetti westerns. They don't call it in a period piece right, the listen, good, the bad, and the listen, ugly. This is my point. This is my point. I was arguing what the definition of a period piece is. If don't you're put, arguing, if, don't make your point with your hand like if that. If you're arguing the way the common person uses it, that's not what you said. I was arguing the definition of a period piece. Wow, the common man. Uh, you're, you're an elitist. No, I said the common person. Joe DeRosa. Regular, regular person. You're an elitist. You know, that's a great bit, Joe. We should start doing... Uh, Joe DeRosa no, don't No, different slamming campaigns. I, I, like, you know I, I'm going to do a smear campaign on you. I blew it because that could have been... We came up with this new bit called Bill. Here's where you're wrong. Because we'll argue about stuff, and I'll go, Bill, here's where you're wrong. Which is goes, the most annoying thing ever. Like, I'll go on and on, like, my big stupid theory that has no research behind it. And he'll sit there, and they'll be, okay, here's where you're wrong. Like, I was on to something. Like, I feel like I'm his kid. <laughs> so he said we should do a segment with Joe DeRosa, here's where you're wrong. I should have, I, I, we blew it right there, the period piece. Bill, here's where you're wrong. I didn't even think to do it. Uh, you're just behind the scene DeRosa this week, aren't you? With what? You just, you just... Showing the, 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 the ugliness, the nuts and the with bolts. With what else? What did I do? The, the period piece with the breakdowns. Do you think anybody even knows what a fucking breakdown is who's not an actor? Well, you do, do you, so do, you, do you should know better. Well, there's other people listening, you well, myopic okay. fucking asshole. Why don't you explain to our listeners who aren't fucking Why actors? Why don't you what, explain what, 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 since what, you're what, so concerned about their feelings oh my God. right now? Why don't you explain? You can't even explain what it is. A, what a breakdown is? Yeah. A breakdown is the paper they send you, the the one page description of a movie or a TV show. The breakdown is what they send you to, so you can read it and know what the fuck is going on in the script, what the TV show is about, what the characters are about, what the fucking theme of the show is, blah, 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 blah. Okay, here's where you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> are you setting me up just to do that? That was good. No, I just like, all of a sudden I felt like you didn't even know what the hell it was. No, That's I what it is, it is. yeah. <clears throat> I know what it is, but... Uh, uh, we... <laughs> You've been doing a lot of rubbing in your face this week. That's part of the boredom of not drinking. I can't take it anymore. I need pussy, and I can't... <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to get pussy ever again, because without booze, it's impossible. I'm, get me the booze. Get me the pussy. <laughs> it's impossible, dude. I'm trying to think if I ever picked up a girl without a drop of alcohol in me. You can't. The booze is the booze. <laughs> you have to say it like that every time. <laughs> The booze is, it's it's the it gives you the confidence to be Mister Fucking. Hey, when we go, you know, when we go back to my place, and it's the lure, it's the lure to get a girl back to your place. You go up to her, you're hanging out, bar closes, you go, you know, I got drinks. Why don't we go back to my place and have a drink? And she goes, um, okay. You can't do that sober. You, you can't. can't it's, it's be impossible. Be sitting in a coffee shop next to a girl. You need reading. it to get your courage up, and she yeah. needs to, she needs it so she won't feel like a whore. Going to go up to some girl at Starbucks. Hey, I, uh, I got coffee. Well, you know what, Joe? House. That is the ultimate level. That's if the you, game. If you can actually, if you can actually do it. So, have you ever? Have any of you guys ever like seriously just like seduced a girl, like just swept her off her feet? Yeah, like a couple times, but that's. It's great when it what happens. What did you do that just swept a girl off her feet, Joe? You just... Why do you say it like that? Because I say, just don't find you charming. I just don't picture any woman picturing you yeah, riding Bill, on a white horse. Yeah, Bill, you smooth operator, you. I've never done it. You have to. You absolutely have. There was one time in your life... I have life, never been complete... I've, I, first of all, every girlfriend I've ever gotten, I've gotten when I've been hammered. I see them in that, or they you, saw, oh, they saw me in, in like performing an acting class. I had a tap dance or something. I have me, never just walked up to somebody. You told me the story of how you, you, your current girlfriend, of how you executed the first hookup with her, and it was very, it was very smooth. It was a, it oh, was, smooth. It was definitely it was a, smooth. Well, that's but, what but, but, but no, saying, no, no, no. I'm then. saying like swept a girl off her feet, like the, a period piece, Joe. The old fucking days, the way they used to do it. You know, you throw a couple pebbles at a window and you read her poetry. One time, my girl, this girl that I dated in college, who became my girlfriend for a little while, 
the first time she came to my apartment, like our first like date, because in college that's a date. Uh-huh. Uh, we were on the couch, and I was really I was in a play with her, and I was really funny in the play because I, I had like the funny part or whatever. And I had really been charming her for a long time. So when we finally got to my house, we were on the couch making out, and she stopped, and she was like this. She was like smiling and like. Oh, that's her sh creepy. Her shoulder, and I was like, "What?" I go, "What are you doing?" And she goes, "I'm swooning." Ugh. <laughs> Is there anything <laughs> fucking worse than that? Well, maybe it's just, I just swept any her sort up, of I like guess. emotion, either complete lack of it or too much of it, and I just, I just want to leave the room. I liked it when she said it. It was nice. Oh, that girl I was telling you about that one time. <clears throat> I was trying to have phone sex with this girl. I'm like, "What are you doing? You laying in your bed?" She's like, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I literally just put the phone down on my lap like, oh, God. I was having phone sex with a girl once, and I go, yeah. She goes, she goes, what do you want to do to me? And I go, you want it in your ass? You want me to put it in your ass? And she goes, well, do you want the honest answer or the phone sex answer? <laughs> I was like, can you just say yes, stupid? You're across the country. It's never going to fucking happen. Uh, <laughs> an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what I asked her. I would I would break up with her right then. <laughs> you told a story once on the air, and uh, it it makes me laugh every time I think about it. Where you said you were dating some girl, and she invited you over, and she was trying to be like sexy for you, so she opened the door oh, and she was yeah. wearing like oh, and you were into like did I, she thought did, you were into jazz, like weird acid jazz. Did I did I did I tell that on this show though? I don't know. I don't want to repeat I don't remember, myself. I don't know if it, I think it was actually uh, I think it was O and A. You told it on, but dude, I get the visual. From that story where she opens the, the girl in the towel, it. yeah, yeah, and she was wearing like she wanted to be sexy, so you said that she had shoes on, but right, she was right, wearing right. like terrible black flats. Oh, it, was, it was brutal. It was brutal. <laughs> I was dating this girl. All right, I gotta tell the story now for uh, first time listeners. Everybody else, take a bathroom break. I, uh, I basically, you know, I was banging this broad over there, right? I was, I was hooking up with Bang. this girl, uh -huh. and. Um, it was great, man. We were, we were, you know, we were having a good time or whatever. So she basically had a. This is how I met this girl. It was a great angry fuck. The first time I met her was, I was calling up to find out what my my uh, my 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 lodging was going to be at this college gig, and she was just being a jerk about it. She ended up sticking me in a hostel, which I had no idea what that was. And I showed up, and it was like me and some fucking Arabian sword swallower right. in like these bunk beds, right? So I was fucking pissed, right? And she, we already had, like, we kind of had, like, this fuck you, fuck you without saying it on the phone. So when she, she kind of had this attitude with me when I first showed up. So she booked me and this other comic who was missing part of his ear. Ooh. That's what I, yeah. And this right. really, I don't know why, dude. What, was I going to ask him? That's exactly what I should have said. I should have literally pointed at his ear going, ooh, <laughs> why? <laughs> no, I don't know. He's missing part of his ear. So I was like, wow, that's weird. You know, so he had to have, like, really, like, 70s length hair, right? So he ends up going up on stage, right? She's all proud of herself. What that pissed me off. She booked two comedians, right? Mm -hmm. So I could have taken half that fucking money and actually had a decent place to stay. Long story short, the fucking dude with the fucked up ear goes up and has a fucked up set. He's <laughs> bombing. And immediately uh. she has this panicked look on her face, looking at me like, now I got to come in and save the day. So, of course, I went up there and I had to follow this fucking guy who stunk. I went up and I killed. So immediately she wants to fucking bang me, but she couldn't. Because we're in Chicago, blah, blah, blah. So we end up, why the fuck did I go? I went literally went back like 200 pages in the story. Let me get, let me get to the point here. So, All right. I'm, so I'm banging this I'm banging this broad. Wait, why couldn't you fuck her that night? Oh, she, her fucking niece showed up, and I had a bunk bed. And she had no place to go. It was terrible. And you, okay. can just, you can just feel the vibe. So then when did you end up fucking her? She ended up calling me. She called my stupid college agent who gave her my home phone number. She's like, we're definitely going out. We're definitely partying. Oh, she came to New York? Yeah, she okay. like moved here, right? So she was working okay. at one of these universities here. And uh, <laughs> she was like in charge of the dorm. Like she checked in on all the kids. So I guess one of the things was you couldn't have any sort of, uh, you couldn't have any candles. There were certain things that you couldn't have in your dorm room. Any sort of paraphernalia. If you did, you got in trouble. So she wanted to role play sex. She wanted me to be that guy, come over to inspect her room to make sure she didn't have any of the stuff there that she shouldn't have had. And her whole thing was she wanted to come to the door in nothing but a towel and high heel shoes. And, of course, I was going to go in there, find shit that she wasn't supposed to have, and then she would, of course, have to be disciplined. And, right? like, you're showing up and going right into this. It's not like you guys were hanging out. No, no, no. We'd already been going out for a while. I completely fucked oh, up the story oh, by telling oh, okay. other bullshit, right? Okay. So, anyways, 
So basically, by this point, we're like three three months into the fucking relationship, right? I tried to get this thing going, and it's just it's not going good. Like she said, she was into jazz, so I bought her like this John Coltrane CD. I tried to be a good guy, but we're, we're basically she, we get into this fight on the phone, and I'm going over there, and it's like I'm thinking the whole way right over, like I got to break up this girl. What the fuck am I even doing with this shit, right? I come up to the door, I knock on the door, she, she, he opens the door, and I'm already have this big breakup fight. She opens the door, and she's standing there, nothing but this towel, okay, and these high heel shoes, but they weren't, they weren't sexy shoes. They were like this sensible shoe, and literally had like an eighth of an inch fucking, you know those, those shoes you wear so you don't have back problems as a chick? Yeah. You know, what I mean? that's what she's wearing. And in the background, she had put the CD on, the jazz CD that I got her. This is this big romantic moment. And I bought her this John Coltrane CD. I didn't know anything. So it's like this jazz that's like... Yeah, so it's playing that, and she's standing there. She looked fucking ridiculous. And I was literally, I was going to burst out laughing, but I knew if I, if I laughed at her in that moment, you know... That I was, I was going to ruin her for the next guy. I was literally, she was going to be, like, the next time the guy tried right. to touch her, she'd be fucking in the fetal position, drawn with, like, a purple crayon or something. Right. So what I did was, basically, I had to play it off like she had, like, like I was so surprised. Right. Because, dude, my dick was literally slumped over on my fucking leg. Like, whatever. You're on your own. So I had to, I had to act like, like I was so overwhelmed. And the first thing I did when I got in there was I got the fucking CD off. I shut that off. <sighs> And then I was sitting there, and she was all proud of herself. Like, she had totally, like, seduced me. And she was sitting there with her fucking legs crossed. Do you know when they swirl their foot around? Ugh. And I'm looking at that was the toe, stupid, was the shoe and hanging? she with the fucking shoe on. Was it hanging off, or was it... Was it I, no, it was still on. It was snug, and it was on, and she was all proud of herself. Like, she was this sexual vixen. And, like, I just, ugh, I wanted to str a smother her with the fucking towel. Somehow, I got, it, I got the shoes off, and then I had to basically splice together... Every horrific porn scene I had ever seen to some... I just bent her over and just I did it like a job. I literally got out of there. Oh, there's nothing worse than a woman... Can somebody when... throw something at me for how long that fucking story was? I can't I believe enjoyed you didn't... it. Oh, you did? You sta the... Dude, you didn't even give me any sort of active listening. I was listening. I was getting paranoid I that I was bombing halfway thing. through. Well, I'm a defensive guy. Help I enjoyed out it. <laughs> oh. I, uh... There's nothing worse than a woman who acts sexy and is very satisfied with how, se like when she's got that look, like oh, I'm being sexy right now. You know I am. It's like, uh, oh, uh, that's, it's that's so forth. That's like a comic going, "Hey man, I'm dangerous. I'm edgy." You know what I mean? It's the same. Just skin people can't, crawl. People can't handle. Oh, oh, when a girl tries to make a sexy face in bed, when she's like, you know, like, eh, oh, fucking get off of me, get away from me. <laughs> There's no if it's not organic, it's just such a fucking turnoff. That's why I don't like the the role playing stuff. I, I, I never was interested in that because it was it's whatever, not organic whatever. in any way, you know. Dude, you know, all it is is it's just talking dirty. Like, it, you know what? It's just like a real porno. You know, like when you rent a porn, they're like hot, sexy nurses, and you put it on, and for half a second they're dressed as nurses, then they're just another naked girl on a couch. Yeah. And it looks like every other porno. That's all it is. I love those ones where it'll be like, it'll be like, you know, you know, teens, like 18, 19 year old girls. And then they dress up as like, like they're younger and that they don't know what they're doing. And they'll have them in like pigtails and little dresses and shit, you know? And then like, you know, they'll do like the whole scenario where the guy comes in and he's like, where, where's your mom? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, she's out and like the, she's acting like she's a kid or something and he's like don't tell her we did this but why don't you lick just lick it for a minute and the second she puts it in her mouth she's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like can you fucking act like you don't know how to yeah, suck you gotta hit, you gotta hit you gotta say cut yeah you're breaking character <laughs> you went from teenager to 36 year old divorcee <laughs> dude I don't know though man like I've been watching so much porn because I like, dude. It's is really... that what, is that what you're doing to fill up the? Uh, we've basically been talking here on Uninformed about how me and Joe are trying to be sober, which believe me, by next show we're not going to be. By the end of this one, we're not going to be. I don't think. But we, it's, dude. It's so hard to. Uh, it's just really hard to get chicks without without the drinking, man. I don't know. <sighs> Go through the pain, Joe. What do you, you want to up your game, Danny? You ever you ever picked up a girl sober? Yeah, when I was a kid, like when I was like high school age yeah you know like not not so much now because now i'm always hanging out at bars or i'm in a situation where there's liquor or booze or whatever but uh when i was a kid sure that was like the only way to do it 
The only girl I picked up in high school was uh, my senior prom, and it was the girl I, I just asked her to the prom. And this is me pick, and we were like literally right. the last two people left. It was just, this is how I picked her up. Will you go to the prom with me? <laughs> I used to have a lot of balls. Did you bang her? Did I, dude? We were the last two people to hook up. No, no, dude. I, I didn't get laid in high school. Me, 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 me neither. Really? No. Wow. I dude, I, I looked like a. I looked like if you could somehow. Aged the Howdy Doody puppet into his teenage years. That's. I mean, it was. It was just. It was impossible. I. I. I got so late in high school. Like more so then than than ever. Like I wish I could go back to high school. I you know what? If you didn't say girls, it like that, I, I believe it. Laid. I know you did, but you, I got like so late. No, oh I, you know what it was. I got like. So I did. Laid it was school. ridiculous because. <clears throat> you look like one of those guys. You probably had a goatee in the fucking eighth grade. No, nah, it wasn't. I wasn't really like that. I was just. Uh, I don't know, I look more normal now, I guess, aside yeah. from the hair. But, like, I used to have, like, I was, cr like, wacky. Like, I would, I would grow my hair out and then, like, dye it weird colors and wear, like, those giant pants. And, like, I just looked like a cool guy, I guess. So. Yeah, so, you know what? That's that's not... So, you had a gimmick. I'm talking stone sober, just being Danny. And being, well, that was and, me. Oh, I, I wasn't and, putting and, it on. And being okay with being Danny. Fuck you. You were searching for yourself. You were trying to be interesting. Well, it's 16. Who, who, you know, uh, you Danny, know who you were at 16. I agree with you. You had There's a shiny belt. There's nothing wrong with no. that. No. That's like saying, you know, that's a, that's a gimmick. I wore pipe leg jeans. It's and how he dressed when he was sixteen. Dyeing your hair, trying to be interest, interesting. He was sixteen. How I mean, of, a of course, it was Joe, a, you know, the name of the game here is to gang up on the guy <laughs> who fucking opens up. Maybe we want to gang up on you, Bill. Well, I didn't say. Hey, we're sick of you pushing us around. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you two fags should fucking toughen up. <laughs> No, that's a, the point is that, that can't, I hooked up with a lot of girls in high school. I never got laid because I was t terrified to have sex because of my religious upbringing. Your dad was a deacon. Yeah, but I got, you know, like hand jobs and shit like that. All through. I did very well, actually. But then in college, I got... N uh, I didn't what? do it there. I didn't do it there. Oh. It was a perfect opportunity to do the De Niro, and I didn't How do it. you going to say nothing? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> College, I did. I did very poorly for most of it. It was. Uh, I don't know what happened to me, man. I was so fucking confident all through high school, uh, like really, really confident. I never drank nothing. <laughs> I then, just pictured you going to college, like the beginning of Revenge of the Nerds, like your your, your deacon dad. It was dropping you off. Yeah, it was like nerds, nerds, nerds. <laughs> that ogre dude on top of a, on top of a frat house. But you know, I got to college. Something happened to me. My freshman year in college, I got really depressed. I don't know why. And uh, I think it's because I liked, I was in love with this girl who was like my best friend, and then she was like, "Sorry, no doubt." Yeah, I had a situation like and that. And she started going out with my guy best friend, and it f it really fucked me up, man. And I was fucked up. I had no confidence with chicks, and then I started like really. That's when I started really discovering the beauty of booze uh, <laughs> and pot. The booze. booze. I knew a girl, and uh, I was I was finished, man. It, it, it was I was I did not do well in college. Uh, she was like my best friend growing up, and uh, we were really close. And uh, she would never give me anything because uh, under the guise that we were really good friends, it would be weird and everything. But she would like blow my other friends, <laughs> and uh. I, so I'd know about it and everything. And like it would fucking infuriate me because I was I was in love with her. Like I was I was fucking absolutely in love with her, right. and just knowing that she was. You know, like every time they'd hang out, you know, she's she would blow one of my other friends. <laughs> just piss me off. You know what's funny? That's yeah, that's amazing. why I'm so I, I'm like, like I don't think I could, uh, like you know, it's got to be really hard to actually be stone sober, seduce a woman, and that there's this, this line where you're just being charming and all that stuff and being into them as a person. Where you cross a line, you go in, you become like that Chris Rock bit. You go into the friend zone. You literally become like a friend like oh you and they hug you and their fucking tits are up against you and there's like nothing you can do that's why like i only know one way to do it and that's to get drunk and, and then bitches. and no and then <laughs> <laughs> and take the pussy no i literally the only way i know how to do it is to get drunk and to just literally just just start saying all the shit that you shouldn't be saying and steer the conversation towards sex yeah. I, guess, I guess that's how I, I hook up, but I, I got to admit, there's been a couple of times. But even then, I, I've never been fucking honest. I have never got an honest piece of pussy in my life. I've never had. Like, I remember, I remember just deliberately being sensitive or concerned. Uh, I've never legitimately, like, like be, been but the, concerned. Dude, the boot. The, the boot. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's it's it's. Uh, oh, you know, we got to help out the listeners here. If you want to know the impression we're doing, go on. Uh, if you, if you're near a computer, go on uh, YouTube, type in uh, intervention, and then write Derek D E. Was it D E R E K? I'm so stupid. And uh, there's just this this was a Canadian guy. Yeah. Why can't you go out? Yeah. To the liquor store. Yeah, and he's he's trying to convince his friend yeah. to get him get him some alcohol. And he tries every fucking dirtbag trick, getting mad, threatening to kill himself, he eats punching cigarettes. something, hurting himself. He eats, he, a eats a cigarette. He eats a cigarette. He does every little acting out fucking junkie drug addict thing he can do, and then finally he just looks the guy in the eye. He's like, he just his last resort. He just goes, get me the booze. <laughs> Well, you saw the one that's like it's it's all over the internet now. It, can't, it, it just blew up like last week. Oh yeah, the chick that that the huffer. That, yeah, she's inhaling the computer oh, duster. I could barely watch that. It was making me depressed. We just we just man. did a parody of that. It's probably going to be up on ComedyCentral.com. dot com. They'll probably take it down by the time this airs. We did a uh, a parody of it. Did I tell you that? No, no. Like I had to do the promo for my special, and we were trying to come up with the way. And so basically, rather I'm I'm doing the Derek character. Where it's like, rather than trying to get him to go to the liquor store, I'm trying to get him to do the promo. Like, come on, just do the promo. Just do the promo like that. And then, I don't know, it's a long story. By the end, I'm huffing the whipped cream <laughs> after I freak out. and sp I, I can't tell a story in this episode, Joe. It's all right, Bill. It really That's what happens. <laughs> don't worry. I'm, dry I'm up. Gonna, once we go to break, I'm going to go get that six-pack of Talls. And it's just going to sit there. And if you feel like you need a little help, you can just... It's funny it. is when the condensation... Builds up on the beards. It's gonna be like 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 flop sweat. I gotta admit though, I'm having fun. I'm I, I have no real interest in taking a break quite yet. I think we're really rolling along. We've been going for an hour. Is that it? Yeah. Ugh. Let's take a break, just uh, for pacing's sake. Yeah, we got to take a break. And we have to dice the show up, Joe. All right. I just thought if we were in a roll talking, you could just chop it. Where you chop? Just keep it. talking. You know what I mean? Well, now you just killed it, so now we can take a break. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, you're listening to Uninformed. Uh, what, what, do we even have a number? We don't have a phone number. We'll let you listen to Uninformed. We'll be right back. Keep it here. It's Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. It's good. I want to tell you a story about the house in blue. Okay. I want to tell you a story. You're listening to Friday. Uninformed with the now sober Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. Yes. We, we are not enjoying it. You know, yeah. you, know what you, you know what you brought up? And this guy gets on my nerves, by the way. Huh? George Thurgood. I like this album. He gets on my nerves. I like this part of the song. The guy comes up. Yeah. Right here. I like this shit. The music's okay. It's just all persona. I don't buy it at all. Oh, I go to the landlady. Uh, I'm a drinking man. Shut up. He's like uh, Cheryl Crow. I just don't buy it. Remember when Cheryl Crow first came out and her whole vibe was, I'm just a girl who likes beer in the morning. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're f like, it, it's second fucking out. It took one album for her to change that whole fucking persona when she realized it wasn't going to sell for much. Dude, longer. I really wish I could add to the Cheryl Crow. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know any of her music. I just know her music is... Uh, my brain goes to the same place when I watch reality TV, when her music comes on. I want to do. What's the other? What's <laughs> what is the other one? If it makes you happy. Uh, no, that was that was a that one made me want to kill somebody. She had another like just mindless. Oh, yeah. I'm leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you're doing like a bad heavy metal. Just stop it, Joe. Just stop it. The only thing worse than do ACDC you, you know, singing show. <laughs> I don't want to do it as a fun. <laughs> you know, no, Joe, if there's a funny. way to get booed off of radio. Joe, you know what? I'm going to tell you something right now. You cannot do impressions. No. Of famous people. But you just did one of, of, of fucking Doug Senye, who was a guest. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> he was the one where Joe made fun of the, his facial cancer. <laughs> that really just ended his good time on this show. Remember that? He had some cancer yeah. carved off his face. He had uh, cancer on his face over <laughs> <laughs> You know, Joe. I just realized Joe is—he's—he's he's he's an old school lounge act. You already got the awful shoes and the bad impressions. I don't wow. know. I, I didn't—I didn't mind uh, George Thorogood. I mean, he—he had, he had a couple good albums, man. You know, Bad to the Bone was good. But yeah, I gotta admit, like, I don't like the white guy when the white guy plays the black music and then he—he uh, he has like the black accent. 
That's why yeah. I liked Eminem. Eminem just kind of came out with white rapper or whatever, and yeah. he just kind of did his. He didn't. Yeah, I like him. He didn't. He you know didn't ax anybody anything. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yeah. I just never bought the guy's uh, George Thorogood's uh, persona. I just always thought it was like a really. It seemed like a factory persona. That's a great song that makes you want to drink though. You know what always bothered me though. One bourbon, one scotch, yeah, one beer. You, you, you'd you never do that. Yeah, you wouldn't get bourbon, scotch, and beer. You'd get scotch and beer or bourbon and beer. Maybe he's with somebody, Joe. Probably not even... No, he maybe says he's actually, Maybe, maybe he's actually buying a round. No, no, no. Something he you says, don't know anything about. <laughs> he, says, <laughs> he says he drank them. Do you ever go drink it with Joe? Fuck you! I it's buy right. fucking rounds! <laughs> I think only maybe once or twice. Oh, my I God. Remember. I mean, you will literally, you'll die of scurvy. <laughs> You're fucking lying. You are full of shit right now. Joe, you know what it is? You, you, you act the part. I mean, that's what's so funny about you making fun of George Sergo. You act the whole Ocean Eleven's part. You come out there with your little dinner suit, you know, <laughs> your little Hugh Hefner fucking jacket, you know. Right. You, you you do that whole thing, you know. And, then, and you I know, drink. And the drinks are coming and they're flowing. But, Joe, you never saddle up. You're you, ne you never saddle lying, up. Dude. You, you do, but I'm telling you, Joe. I'm telling you. Bill, you're lying. I've yeah. picked up plenty of checks when we're out. We, I, I think it's okay. Now you're lying, Bill. You plenty of checks, Bill. It's it's fifty fifty every time. First of all, I was break I was breaking your balls. Right. Well, I know, about it's... buying a round, but I don't, okay, now now I'm serious. I don't ever remember you. Hey, uh, I'm picking up the check. Fuck off. You know how many times you said these words to me? Okay, I'll get the next one then. I fucking picked it up many times. The next round? No, the next fucking check. It's, it's very even keeled with shit like that. No, I don't ever remember saying that. Oh, Bill. Bill, you, you I bought really you dinner last night, you fuck. Yeah, yo, because I came down and did your goddamn promos did you, you got you, No, you got paid 150 bucks. Oh, wow. Well, really? that's, that's not nothing. Uh, yeah, well, that, you know what I just exposed him as, Danny? A lying sack of shit. Why am I lying? You said when you, you bought just said, dinner. Shut up. When you bought dinner, you said I bought, I'm buying you dinner because you were underpaid today. You said that. You said that to me. And what did you just say? You said you weren't paid. You want to get oh, into well, semantics well, with well, the period I'm, piece stuff? You want to go back to that? Excuse me. I didn't mean to say I wasn't paid. I was saying, I was insinuating I was underpaid, which is why you said you bought me dinner. That's what you said. <laughs> you said that. I wasn't arguing that, Joe. What I was arguing, you said that you didn't fucking get paid. All right, well, I misspoke. Excuse me. No, dude, fuck that and fuck that misspoke shit. Here I'm comes say, no, a no. bit. No. I, <laughs> it's not a bit, dude. It's a point. It's fine. Bill, I was, I, was, I was referring back to when you said that you got underpaid today, so I'm going to buy you dinner. I, I didn't mean to say I didn't get paid. That's not how I meant it. Dude, I can't believe you just said, here comes a bit when we don't even have a fucking guest and we got three hours to fill by ourselves i'm a little perturbed that you did and, and, and it wasn't even a bit i'm a little perturbed a that you seem to not remember me ever picking up half of the fucking checks when we go out and eat at a diner or whatever oh, yeah going half on a check yeah i, I remember oh, you doing that off. <laughs> fuck off man seriously um i don't know joe you've you you, you know I know you're I, just I, trying to get me rattled, 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 rattled. I'm not. Now. I mean, I don't yes, know. You are. I, I think you owe me a couple of trips to the Brooklyn Diner. That's all I'm saying. I'd like some curly <sighs> fries. You are so. Uh, it's unbelievable. How By the way, Danny sometimes. has brought in. He brought in. He didn't get the Budweiser because uh, they charge strip club prices. Well, next door they charge individual. Yeah, like around like this area of Midtown, it's like it's hard to to go and get like a six pack of beer and not get raped on it. So I had to go to Dwayne Reed, which is like a, a local drugstore, like like Walgreens or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, their selection, their beer selection is is just dismal. Who buys only one? I never understood that. I guess homeless people, he, hey, hey, hey. one beer? And they get up to sure. like <laughs> one <laughs> scotch, <laughs> one beer. Well, is especially that what like a, yeah, a lot actually. And the place the place next door is like a pizzeria, so like you could just grab a beer, but they're in the packaging for a six-pack. So if you take a six-pack to the front, you expect like you're not going to get raped. On the per bottle charge, Not in this but they city. do. But they charge you like four or five dollars per. So oh, they charge twenty four. So, so anyways, we got we have a. Uh, There's a six pack of Heinz. I was at a fucking diner today with my manager this morning. Eleven o'clock. It's empty. We go in to get some coffee to kill some time before a meeting. And uh, the waiter comes over and goes, "What do you want to order?" I go, "Well, we're just we have coffee. Just bring us an order of wheat toast and you know nothing. Whatever. We're fine." And he goes, "I have to charge you six dollars. It's a minimum. It's a, it's un." Fucking believable. Every fucking turn in this city, they will put another finger in your Six ass. Six is probably getting off cheap, too. But you see what I'm saying, though? 
I mean, if he's complaining about six dollars, I mean, how the hell is he going to be like picking up a check? He's such a fucking hump. <laughs> he really is. Joe, I'm just I'm, I'm making jokes here. We're trying to entertain some people, okay? Every once in a while, they come at your expense. I've taken some. I hate when you talk like that. That's take, my I'll least take, favorite. When you, Danny, I just said that. Like he's going to fucking say Figaro at any minute with that fucking pose. Joe, when you does pick, it bother you? I'll yeah, keep doing it. It does. It bothers. Keep doing it. When you're picking up chicks at a bar, Joe, do you ask the girl, hey, can I get you a drink and then rub your fingers together in front of her? <laughs> <laughs> like I got mine, funny. but you got yours. <laughs> Last night, this girl came up. Hey, what are you drinking? Oh, yeah? Why don't you get me one of those, too? <laughs> Joe DeRosa's pickup okay. lines. Okay, cool. Mine's probably like four. Or, so right. yours probably like. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, why don't you get this, the first round? I'll get the next one. This girl came. Listen, out my buddy just me. called. <laughs> this girl came out to see me last night, and uh, she brought some friends with her. So we we take a cab over to this bar. I pay for the cab. We in the bar. They're all like, "Thanks for paying the guy." Yeah, sure, whatever. So her friends all go in the bathroom. I go, "You want a drink, sweetie?" She goes, "Yeah." I go up and I'm. Yeah. I <laughs> I'm going to tap. <laughs> I order my drink and her drink, and I go, "What do your friends want? Do you think?" And she goes. You're going to buy them drinks? And she got all like wide eyed, like, wow, we got a free ride. And I go, I go, I'm going to buy them a round of drinks. I'm not buying them drinks all night long. You know what I mean? And I felt like a little cheap saying that. But at the same time, I was like, no, I'm not opening my fucking credit card to your goddamn friends for the rest of the night. I'm being nice and a now, gentleman what, and I, buying a round of drinks what? here. You, you're. I do that sometimes, like, to, to kind of ward off the pack. You know, if, if there's one girl you want to bang and she's with, like, three other people, like, you want to try to keep the herd at bay. It's almost like you're, you throwing, them, you're throwing them scraps, you know. It's <laughs> well, you to some part of a... Uh, but you have to watch, too, because I've been out with chicks where it's a couple of them and I'm trying to bang one of them, and they fucking... They fucking, like, go up and keep ordering drinks on your tab. They take advantage of it. Oh, they, they, yeah, this. Uh, you know, they're cunts. No, they're not. They're not. They're, no, they're not all. I'm trying not, not to be like that. They're not all like that. This, not this, all girls. I'm saying when just ninety percent of them. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not saying all girls. I'm saying the girls that do that. That's a real cunt that does something like that. It's shitty. And they need to be told. And that's the message. Show. That's the theme of the show. That if someone is being a real cunt, they need to be told in those words. That's right, Bill. That's right. That's right. So what ended up happening? Uh, they drank the one round they bought and they left. <laughs> and what happened, what happened with the girl? <laughs> Nothing. She left. You know what I think sometimes, like half the time, I don't think the other girls are like protecting the, the other girl. I think it gets into their ego, like that you're not hitting on them. You don't find them interesting. So they're just trying to, I mean, girls in general, you date them. They just, anytime you're going to have some fucking fun or you want to do something, they just ruin it. They are fun. Well, why, why don't we do? She had one friend that was, uh, she why had one friend get that was, uh, on your car? that was doing the The other the ones whole. work. She had one friend that was doing the whole, um, you know, all night she's just talking real whorey, you know. I need a dick. Blah, blah. Ugh, that's, that's scary. <laughs> that's going to get isolated. She talked like a promo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what she talked like? informed. <laughs> Joe DeRosa. I need a dick. <laughs> you, know what, you know what she talked like? She talked like, uh, <laughs> she talked like Tyler Perry when he dresses up like Medea. Like, literally, like that character voice. Like, oh, you better tell me something, baby. Right? And we're in the car. We're in. We 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 got one of the black car cabs, whatever, to go over to the bar. And we're in the car. I'm sitting in the front seat. She's sitting in the back, and she's going, "Mmm, we got a cute driver in this car. Ooh, motherfucker, yeah. Ooh, I'm gonna climb over this seat and sit on your lap." And the cab driver starts talking nasty shit to her back. He's like, "You gotta come up here and sit on my third leg, baby. I'll get you Ugh. all fucking wet and sticky, right? I'll fucking jizz on your twat." <laughs> you know, all like, right, whatever. we got and it. Be he's being filthy. <laughs> he's being filthy. But in between being filthy, he's trying to still be professional with me, you know. So he's like, "He's like, I'll fuck you on a fucking altar. I'll fill your cunt with holy water, uh, sir." Excuse me. You said it was Fifty Seventh Street between first and second. <laughs> So we get in the bar, and this girl is doing this all night. You know what's so funny? Bill and I have the same, you know, we're the same management company. So Josh, you know Josh, of course, uh -huh. from the company. He walks in, and she's running her fucking mouth. I need some dick, blah, 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 right? So Josh is like, what is wrong with her? First Josh, of all, you, the way you do her, you make her sound like she's sixty. Uh, I don't know how old she was, but she was. She was probably dear. thirty. 
But Josh is like just Josh is so nebbishy. <laughs> you hanging out with James Brown? Josh is very Woody Allen. Ah, I need Dick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think I got more and more character. You know, by the time you get done telling this story, you could actually be on one of those Tyler Perry shows. That's hilarious. So Josh is really. So he just fucking. You see how he just did that? Yeah, that's hilarious. Let me get back to what I'm yeah, doing. I want to finish the story before I lose momentum. Josh it's gone, Joe. Josh is really like you know nebbishy, you know. So he walks in and I go, I go, Josh, come over here for a second. And he walks up and he's like, Hey guys, nice to meet all of you. And I go, Josh, she, I go, Josh has a cock and you want some <laughs> cock, so you guys should get together. <laughs> and I just put her on Josh and she's just watching this this little fucking reserved Jewish kid and this fucking audacious black girl all over him. You know what I mean? And he's so uncomfortable. And I'm just laughing. And what at is him. she saying, Joe? I got to hear more of this. She's just hanging on him like, mm, baby. It's getting more over the top by the end of the second. <laughs> Who are you in the camp with, Audrey too? <laughs> yeah. Bobby, what are we going to play next? So, uh, so, uh, what was the fucking, uh, I can't remember how it ended. I don't know. They just left. But I called her out on it before they left. I go, I go, sweetie, I go, you're the girl. You just talk a lot of shit. You don't do anything, do you? And she was like, no, well, you know, and they all got weird because it's like, I realized they're damned if they do, they're damned if they do. If they go, yeah, no, she's a real whore, then they're, you know what I mean? Or if they go, <laughs> no, she's a pro, then you're like, oh, she's a fucking liar. And they left. And the girl that I liked that came in to hang out with me. What did she sound like, Joe? She just sounds. Oy, uh, hey, mamacita. Andale, andale. <laughs> She sounds, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, there's nothing ridiculous about her voice or anything. But she, uh, she fucking, she did this <laughs> thing with me. Where, where, where she fucking, where every time we hang out, she's one of these girls. She's like, I'm just so tired tonight. Oh, you got to get me on a good night. I'm crazy, but just not tonight. You know, and you're like, after like two or three times that, oh, oh, let me guess, you really tore it up last night. So now tonight you're too tired. So what is she doing? She's just out there for the drinks and the attention? I don't know. It fucking annoys me. Beat it. Yeah. That's my beat it noise. That means beat it. Okay. All right? Yeah. You know, Joe, that show, <laughs> the arc of that story, that was like almost watching the life of a sitcom, like the first two seasons, like the beginning of that story was awesome. <laughs> then you had the middle... Where one of the main cast members leaves to do movies. And then towards the end, you had to bring in, like, peripheral characters to yeah, try like and a, save it. like a pet or a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought the, I thought the middle was the funniest part. Like, Dude, by the end of it, like, Oliver was, was on the Brady Bunch had, at that point. seven from Married with Children. I got up. scared halfway through it that it was starting to sound really racist or something. But it wasn't. It was just, you know, she was that girl. That's no, all. we were more making fun of... Uh, your impression, but speaking of that, you brought up that that Tyler Perry that like that guy is like killing it as far as like all his shows. But there's something weird like that guy. He dresses like he's like a Bill Cosby kind of dude, and and but his shows are like uh, all he that sucks. Oh my god, those shows are he like sucks. I, when I watch his shows, I'm like, aren't these the kind of shows that white people used to write for black people, and then they would get offended by it? Yeah. Well, he I don't sucks, know, like those dude. shows that the. He sucks. He's fucking... every clip somebody's dancing and gonna yeah. go upside somebody's Everybody's head. Fat. <laughs> I give you guys yeah, they're, they're, credit. They're fat and broke. The whole thing is just awful. I can't ever. I can't watch that. Like if, if that's even coming on, I'm like, I'm not watching this shit. Like, dude, oh, I tried oh, to dude, watch any train wreck. You got to be like, I oh, I got to see. I'd this. much rather spend my time with MythBusters or Family Guy or something. I tried to watch dude, MythBusters. Suck. Rules sucks, dude. You're crazy, dude. Every no, time I see them, they're in awesome. they're in a fucking aquarium. They're testing like a, real like, things. Like, like MythBusters is awesome. You're wrong, dude. MythBusters rules. No, I'm right. This is I'm one right. of your, it's, I hate it for Did no you see the one last night? Reason thing. No, this is one of your, I'm going to interrupt without hearing the reason and judging it. Well, what's your reason, Bill? I just find it to be tedious. It's boring, the pacing of it, and I don't find those guys to have any charisma <laughs> that makes me want to continue watching. Joe, I watch those guys put together motorcycles, and, and that, that fucking, uh, uh, what is that? American oh, Chopper? You know, the Orange County, whatever. Yeah, the, American it's Chopper. It's the yeah. exact same episode every time. Of course. You guys going to get that bike done? You going to get the bike done? And then, like, yeah, we're going to get done. Hey. Leave me alone. And where's the exhaust, Junior? Yeah, and then they, then they stand there. They literally stand there. Part doesn't fit. What do you mean part doesn't fit? Part doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. 
Okay, so the part the carburetor didn't fit, and then they go on that whole fucking thing. I, I don't know if we're going to get this bike done. They always get the fucking thing and done. It's always coming back from the Cromer late. That seems to happen a lot on that show. Oh, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> the seat doesn't fit. We forgot we fucked up the gas tank. But I watch it every single so time. Do I. Do you I'm not a every snob. Day. Stop making me out to be a snob. Like, I like Batman. Do you guys? <laughs> do you guys like Ace of Cakes? I like that show. You ever seen it? No. No. It's on the Food Network. When I feel like I'm at some like pathetic online try to make a friend site, <laughs> you guys like cakes? <laughs> Ace of Cakes. You ever saw it's the cake shop and they make like these crazy cakes that look like fucking movie Jesus sets Christ. and shit I like that? I just can't believe, you know, are my concepts too highbrow to get on TV? You just got to go with <laughs> Dude, bottled the water. It's amazing. The bottled water show. The cakes they make are fucking amazing. It's incredible the shit they make. They're cakes that look like Oh, my like God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I saw, I saw an episode of that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good show. Seriously, did you? Yeah, I'm serious. They make like a cake look like Wrigley Field. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. It's pretty awesome. So you'll watch that, but you won't sit through an episode of Mythbusters. I, you know, I just... Yeah, you would think that it would be interesting. <laughs> it just doesn't interest well, me. Because especially for someone like you who's into conspiracy theories and, uh, you know, like the, the... I'm into conspiracy theory, not like, if you had a pack of firecrackers in your back pocket, would it blow half your ass off? <laughs> then they get but a mannequin they, and then yeah, they light they, it. I don't give a shit. I'm more they, like into the Rothschild family, the Illuminati. Yeah, I'm, in, they, I'm into that. But they do some of that stuff. Like, uh, oh, one, of, one of the most recent episodes that I saw was they, they, you know, they went against all the guys that say the moon landing didn't exist. So they tried to recreate. I would watch that. Dude, it was a really good episode. It was on uh, so just did, the other day. Did it happen? Just, of course. What do you mean, of course? Of course the moon landing happened. Bill, it happened. Jesus Christ. Can I ask you a question? First of all, Joe, you don't work at NASA, so you just shut up. Bill, neither do you. I know I don't. Are you actually opposing the concept that the moon landing possibly didn't happen? I'm, I'm, I know, I'm asking it. I'm just asking a question. You know it happened, Bill. Do you, are you one of the people that think 9-11 could have been an inside job? Yeah. Wanted, oh, for Christ's sakes. All yeah. right. All right. I just want to know where I stand with you. That's all. Absolutely. Are you one of those guys who just watches TV and just feels like they're just telling you the truth? Oh, you're right, Bill. They got me brainwashed, man. I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like how he can be this pompous ass. Like, are you one of those people? Blah, 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 blah. Like you're on fucking Fox News. I just. Joe, you don't read. I've st I spent a week with you. You don't do anything. Neither do you, Bill. I know. Well, stop fucking acting like you're above me. You're just I, as fucking stupid as I am. I think. I think. I'm just gonna fucking throw I this think at you. Certain, certain theories are are more ludicrous than others. I think 9/11 being an inside job is ludicrous. I think it's ludicrous. Well, I don't know. When you see those firemen going that they heard, like, explosions and that type of thing, doing that that middle building, what the fuck was with that thing? What, did it get lonely? The other two collapse, and, like, there's it, no damage, and all of a sudden it's just going to take a fall? That looked like Sonny Liston the first time he fought. A 110-story building fell on it. No, it didn't. Yeah, it did. It didn't. It did. Oh, yeah, that thing just perfectly fucking implodes. You know how many times? It's happened three times. In no, history, all on 9-11. No, dude, say I'm was... not saying that fucking, right. like, literally the United States did it, but I mean, I don't know. It just seemed... Dude, do you, believe, you, gonna... do, do, you, do you believe this shit, dude? That passport of Muhammad Atta was in, in his fucking pocket. It flew out, landed like a hundred stories down underneath a fucking building, and it's perfectly readable, and they find a suitcase with all this damnable shit in it. Didn't the whole fucking plane disintegrate, dude? I'm just saying, dude. I'm not saying... I shouldn't have said that, that it's an inside job. But I'm saying, I don't know what happened. Whatever they said happened down there. It doesn't fucking add up, dude. There's a lot of, like, there's a well, lot of I weird don't... shit, man. There's definitely a lot of weird shit going on. My, you know, I, I think... I Pearl think... Harbor, the whole Japanese Navy is coming across the fucking Pacific Ocean and nobody notices. I think that... Par I think this is what I think they do. I think they, they, so they don't literally plan shit. I think they look the other way and shit ends up happening... And then everybody gets pissed, and then everybody's on the same page. Maybe that's how you have to do I it. I don't know if that's for the betterment of the country. I, you really, I, have no I have a friend. Let me say this. I have a friend that worked in a certain area of government security or whatever, that field. He told me, he was like, well, he said, after 9-11, he goes, there's all this uproar about all the terrorist threats we're receiving. He goes, we have received, this country has received terrorist threats every single day in multitude for so many years you can't even fathom. But now that something finally happened, it's being brought into the attention of the public. It's always hidden. It's never talked about. And once in a while, maybe something gets through and some shit happens. But he was like, this is par for the fucking course, man. These threats are coming in every single day in high volume. It's nothing new.
It's nothing new. I don't at all. like how you pulled the "I have a friend in the Pentagon." It's card. true, though. I don't know. He's not in the Pentagon. He worked in gov in the in the field of government security and defense. So he asked people if they had their card when they walked into a government building. No, he. This worked. is your reference. No, he worked in. Jeff, the, I, I don't, you defense. know I don't know what the fuck no. I'm talking about. <laughs> you know I don't. That's a great out. <laughs> no, I don't. I can't argue that. I don't. I'm a paranoid <laughs> psychopath. I just, I don't buy any of it. I don't. It just all seems so fucking stupid to me. So, you you really think that like there was like a crew like a demo crew went into the World Trade Center and it was set no, up no, you know what I, you know what I really think? No, 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 no. I don't. Police. I don't. I don't think all of that. No you know, but 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 what I, what I do think is the evidence that they got. I just I don't believe that you can be in a fucking plane. That fucking bursts into flames. They can't find the black box, but they find your passport. Okay, well, all right. I'll, that type of if, shit. If you want to like, argue that, that's fine. Yeah. But why is it so crazy for a, a 747 to crash into a building and, oh, my God, the, the building actually comes down from it? No, it's more that it just, like, perfectly implodes. Yeah, but have you watched? So, yeah, so what are you saying? Because you're, you're not saying that there was a demo crew setting up charges in the building. So what are you saying? I'm saying, I don't know what happened, but... I but whatever they're telling me, I just don't believe it. Why is it so hard to 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 believe that jet fuel weakened all the steel in that? Because building I watch it... scientists on TV saying the degrees that jet fuel burns at and what the degree it it's has not, to be. It's not enough to melt to, steel. To it's, melt enough, steel. it's enough to weaken it. You're not, a, you're not an architect either, dude. So stop, stop but with the I, pointing. Well, I, yeah, but see, here's where you're uninformed and I am informed because yeah, I've, first of I've all, watched Joe, enough You're stuff. giving me shit. This is the whole show. No <laughs> reading, no research, just strong opinions. See, okay? I, I, and you're, I, you're, you're giving me shit about it. I can't believe we're in this the fucking hacky 9-11 conspiracy theory. I didn't want to even be in I this fucking I just got annoyed shit. when you said, do you, you really, you're just going to believe at face value that somebody walked on the moon? Somebody walked on the moon. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't that's, say that. That's so crazy. exactly what you were saying. No, no, I was saying with, with the 9-11 thing like I just some of the shit was just kind of like really that's fucking weird you said to Danny that's how it all started that it started with the thing about the moon you go do you believe somebody walked on the moon Danny goes yeah and you go you do why because Bill somebody walked on the fucking moon we've been going to the moon for years how come whenever you look through a telescope you don't see the little car up there <laughs> <laughs> didn't we leave shit up there the little car. Yeah, remember when they drove around the car? Was that just in Legoland, or did they really do that? <laughs> that was in Legoland and in Superman 2. Outside of that, there was no sure. car. No, no, that's... To, I've seen, I've seen that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Pair of binoculars? I'm sure if you okay. had a, pow a powerful enough telescope... Okay, then we can catch Danny here. Hey, what are you looking at? A pair of binoculars? Exactly. What, what power level te telescope do I need to look through? What, Pro what? Probably 500X. <laughs> <laughs> I would have believed that if you said it with a straight face. Oh, God. I'm really getting pounded on this show by two other fucking idiots. That's what's annoying me. Oh, how does it feel, Bill? <laughs> Can you stop with your sob story on this show, Joe? Hey, you get the emails. I'm not sending those fucking emails. What emails? About what a cunt you are to me on this show. By the way, Danny, oh, remember? First of all, Joe, remember I two also episodes get ago ones... when I flipped out and I was like, you're being a fucking dick to me and you're beating up on me? Yeah. And he's like, no, I'm not. You can't fucking do that. He's gotten so many emails lies, and people lies, come out to yeah. being like, <laughs> being like, dude, <laughs> Joe's a real lies, sport. Lies, lies. Don't, I'm not lying. You tell me about these okay, fucking Joe, emails. First you of get. all, this is how we had the drum battle. You know why? Because you fucking exaggerate shit. Dude, you're fucking delusional. Yeah, Bill. You, you're fucking delusional. Bill, I'm dude. delusional about the emails oh. you told me that you get. You said, Bill got a ton of fucking emails. I didn't, Joe. I got like two or three, and I read them to you. We have 12 listeners, as you say. That's a no, big Joe, percentage well, of the you, audience. Are you done? I got a bunch of other emails, Joe, that said other shit. What, what did it? What did the other one say, Bill? Do you want? You don't want to know. Why don't you talk about those? You don't want to know, Joe. Why don't you talk about Joe's those, a Bill? bitch? He sounded like a little girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you know, I, that's why I didn't read you those. But okay. I said okay, blah blah blah. And we it's actually okay. said that I shouldn't pick on you as much. I said that, Joe, but I did not say that there was a ton. Like you, you made it sound like like I was like a fucking teen idol in the fifties. Bill, and I got a big sack I'm of mail. I'm repeating it the way you translated it to me. I'm I never said it. I got a ton. Bill, you you're said not. you said it like this. Stop with this. You're a stenographer. You're not you Joe. Said First of all, like I told this it to you like stenographer. That's that little girl. Who types. I know what it is. It doesn't make sense because the way you're, you you're, 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 I am, dude. Because you're acting like you have a direct quote from me from some, some fucking innocuous conversation two months ago. It was three days ago, the, the day before you flew in. You told me this. You go, hey, I got another email saying uh, Joe's a real sport. Ah, I'm a cunt. Ah, God, I'm sorry. You said that to me. Look, I got another email. One email, Joe. Well, the way you make it sound, you're like, oh, I got uh, another email. Can I tell you something, Joe? Once it I'm goes, not once it goes into that big vacant fucking uh, chamber of your head, all Bill. of a sudden, 
all of a sudden, it says it's a ton. Joe, you just said that I told you that I got a, a ton of emails no, about I that. didn't. Fin- you said, I said. Can you fucking rewind the goddamn tape? Bill, I said, you, I said you got a ton of you. I didn't get it. And I said, I'm saying it's it so the way you said. It's such a fucking I said, stupid thing to argue about. I said, I'm you know what, Joe? You know what, Joe? Oh. I'm going to treat you like a little girl. You're right. Okay? How about that? Oh, okay? Bill, Bill there that's, you go. That, there's Bill Burr, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't you go make a bun cake in your little Barbie fucking yeah, stove? Yeah, Bill. Yeah, I'm a little girl. This is the same guy, Danny. <laughs> yeah. Danny. Yeah. Danny. Yeah. Danny. Yeah. Take yeah. note of this. Girl. Take note of this. Remember a few episodes back, this is the same guy that complained that how come any time people want to tell you that something you do is dumb, they equate it to gay or homosexual. That's exactly what you fucking do. As soon as you feel cornered or you feel that a point is being made, really, Bill? Really? You're gonna you're gonna do that through me talking? Yeah, Joe, uh, just let it go. Just fucking no, let it go. I we're just fucking said- having a, we're having an argument. Let me make my point the way you made yours. Don't fucking no, Joe, do that. Because when I cut you off, you get fucking angry. Joe, Joe, you have to be in control it's or you not get angry. that big a deal, dude. Just relax. Have well, a drink, stop Joe. Going, have a drink. Stop going. Hey, can, can, can you open? Can you open don't one of those Heineken? Don't go fucking. Open a Heineken, Joe. Ha, don't go. I don't ha, want a Heineken. I don't stop want Stop yelling. Again. First of all, stop well, yelling. Stop fucking doing that while I'm talking, dude. Because this is the thing. Joe, you, I, I heard your point. I don't agree with it. I heard your fucking point. I don't agree with it. Let me say one fucking thing. When I cut you off, you get hot. But as soon as I start talking, do all I you get do hot? Is, and then do I split, man? Do you see what you're doing? Do you see that you you consistently cut me off? You talk over me. Well, why don't we I'm play tr- back this tape and you'll hear you interrupting me, Joe? Uh, Bill. But the point is, you get angry and I try not to do it because you don't like when I do it. So don't, I don't fucking do it First of all, I don't understand why, you, you, why you're making this such a serious moment. First of all, Joe, you said that I said that you get a ton of emails and then your example was I, I read one email to you what you said to me was if you'd fucking listen i what listened I to you said you said a ton what, and that's what i'm arguing you said a and ton, then Joe. You, when you challenged that i said i'm saying back to you the way you said it to me and you said what did i say and i said the way you phrased it you go i got another email making it sound as if there had been an abundance which was why i said you're delusional like i'm not delusional like, like you, you blew up like three emails that i read to you that now i had like a ton just, Joe, just, just take a sip. It. Why don't you take just, a just sip, take, Bill? Because you're the one freaking the fuck out. You're freaking out, too, in your own way. You're doing your own <laughs> Bill Burr things, freaking out. I tried to tap out, Joe. It's fine. I'm not upset. We're having a fucking argument. Who gives a shit? It's not going to ruin the show. This is what we need. This is what we need. We don't need this, Joe. Oh, for Christ's sakes. You complain that we're not arguing. You complain that we're arguing. Joe, what a good-natured good argument. Oh, Bill, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. That was good. I feel like that was good radio for a minute there. And uh, we added some dynamic to the show, I think. That's okay. what I think. Now. Now, Joe, there's one beer open. You know, <laughs> this, this, should have, this should have been like a punishment. All right. Danny, you really look like a carny right now. Danny's drinking the beer. All right. Danny should be drinking the beer. I feel yeah, bad that he has to put up with all these things. So, you're listening to the Uninformed <laughs> Show. Why are you getting awkward? Bill, Bill, no, that we I'm, argue? No, I'm, I'm trying to get out of this, Joe. I don't know how to. We're I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to spin out of it. What it, What happened to the old Bill Burr? <laughs> like that liked a good fucking bout. What happened here? Well, what now you not, now you, you look like you're having a good time. You seem like you're going to get serious no, again. No, I was fucking have, then, saying we're just. That's why I kept saying we're then, arguing then we, it we'd out. We'd have to have a little PTA meeting no, afterwards. No, I'm not upset. I'm saying we argued it out and it's fine. I still have that voicemail. I got to pull. By the way. What's of, uh, when Joe called me the week after he kind of freaked out a little bit, he thought that we were picking on him a little too much. So he, yeah, he did the tap out like, show. He, he tapped he, out. He leaves me a message. He's like, "Hey, it's Rosa. I just want to apologize uh, for getting a little fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I was being a little fresh." <laughs> I saved it. It's it's one of the many messages that I saved. All right. Well, I'm sorry that I phrased it that way. Whatever that fuck I meant by saying that. Um. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, but this is, this is good. I'm not upset. Aren't you happy? I know, but Joe, do you see how you just went, uh, uh, but, but yeah, because that's, because it's over. The moment's over now. I was trying to move, move it along. Okay, well, move it along, Well, sir. now, now it's fucking awkward. Oh, Bill, it's so not awkward, dude. We're having a great time. Keith yeah, Robinson's on the phone. Forced, who called us earlier, early in the day, Danny, full of, uh, piss and vinegar, man. Piss and vinegar. He will be on the air in a few short moments here, uh, hopefully full of uh, insults for us. I, I, I have to admit, I very thoroughly enjoy when Keith insults me. Would you say that he's the best person to be insulted by? I, I like it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I give it to Keith. 
Yeah, right? I don't know. It's fine. I don't know, Joe. All I know is I'm fucking thirsty. I don't want to drink. I don't want to drink. I'm not going to drink. Then though. don't drink. I'm not going to drink. Don't drink. If you got Budweiser's, I would have been done. Why? Because, you know what I mean? You got to ease back into drinking. And you got to go with some, like, Heineken's. What? Dude, you live in the cellar. You got dry mouth over there. <laughs> I do. What's Heine- what's what what's the Heine- what freaks you out about the Heineken? Uh, Heineken, I don't know. That's like, uh, you know what happens to me when I quit drinking? I literally have to go back to the beer that I started with. And then, then I'll work my way right back up to the whiskey again. So, so you think you're done for life, huh? No, I'm not done for life. We got to, uh, oh, after Jesus we talk to... Christ. Are we, we going to call him right now? We got him on. Yeah, we, we got, got him, him on. on. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. One of our, this, is, this might be our first repeat guest. Granted, he came I into the so. studio last time. Everybody, Keith Robinson. Hey. Ah, Jesus Christ. I repeat, that's because everyone else turns it down. <laughs> I had nothing to do for my drive to the uh, strip <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, who you hosting for out there, Keith? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Nobody. Wait a minute. Are, are you headlining there tonight? I'm headlining like I usually do. No, you I don't. Headline. You know what's you know who's headlining there the rest of the weekend? Me. <laughs> are you there? Yeah. Yeah, why? Oh, the fri- you know what? Keith is a fill in headline. I, I swear to God. I, I, that's Keith. awesome, because usually he books Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but because it's Memorial Day weekend, the Thursday is open, and who does he call? Keith, I swear to God, uh, Vinny Brand called me three times today, and I never got in touch with him. <laughs> I swear <laughs> to Keith God. Is doing, Keith is doing Joe's fallout gigs. Uh, uh, no, I tried to go down to the call to Rose, and I remember you had your radio show. It wouldn't even matter if you did your, this radio show on stage, Joe. It doesn't even matter. I told him, call Joe DeRose. He said he's got a radio show. I'm like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> call him anyway. <laughs> he has nothing to do. This radio show is as many listeners as that phone call they do. Keith Robinson. Uh, <laughs> one person is on the other end of this thing. <laughs> Yeah, there's still time to buy tickets to go see uh, the co-headlining of Keith Robinson and Artie Fletcher tonight at the uh, Stress Factory in beautiful New Brunswick, New Jersey, the one of one of the hidden jewels of the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, uh, the place that you happen to be playing on Friday and Saturday, stupid. I got I got to be honest with you, I actually love playing that club. It's a nice club. It actually is. You know what? Once he finally got the smoke, he has to really take down his... Hold on. Why am I saying it's like you actually got listeners that would talk to him? That club stinks. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to hear this. Hey, Keith. <laughs> um, He's a cheap bastard, and the club stinks. Keith, when, when, <laughs> Keith, when you headline over there, do you, uh, do you allow Vinny to do his awful prank phone call before the show? No. He can't do it. It's dumb... <laughs> His horrific prank phone. Joe opened for me one time, but he couldn't follow the phone call. Uh, oh, we we, we, we got we to fill in the five truck drivers who listen to this. Vinny Brand actually has a pay phone on stage, and before the show, he has people hand out you know questions that they want to call a relative or something. Yeah. And he tries to do some sort of prank phone call off the top of his head, and nine times out of ten, it ends up being horrific. Somehow somebody ends up having cancer or they're missing a limb or something. It just yeah, every, starts it off horribly. And, and not only that, it goes on for about a good 35 minutes. It's just because he's call, too cheap to hire anybody else to open. Every call is like, this is I'm from the police department. You know, somebody from your family is in custody. It's like the meanest fucking, it's not funny at all. And then they do that thing where they, they, they put the camera all around the room and they put it up on the screen and it'll be like, you're a cunt. <laughs> oh, and he shows know, the bloopers. This guy sucks cock. It's just like the most insulting did, fucking did, shit. Keith, did you ever work the club when Vinny, like, right after 9-11, he was playing, like, the national anthem? Oh, Jesus Christ. His, 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 his desperate stab at patriotism. I want to work there. If you keep talking about Vinny, I'm going to turn around and go into the city. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vinny. Oh, Vinny. Oh, guys. <laughs> yeah, man. This is, a, you know, this is a historic night for Mr. Robinson. He's going to. We're calling Vinny next. We're calling Vinny okay. next, and I'm telling him to do yeah. that fucking Wait phone a second. Call. Wait a second. Why is it a historic night? Obama, baby. Oh, that's right. Wow, Keith. He's, he's going to be nominated tonight at the Democratic National Convention. And you needed that $75 so bad for gas money. 
that you took a gig. You TiVoed the moment a black man finally won a, the nomination for presidency. Wow. You know, I'm going to go punch Benny right in his face and walk out. If I have any balls about myself, I'll spit in his face and leave. Keith, I got to tell you something, man. I hope Obama gets elected, and it's not because I give a shit. I just want you to just completely run out of, uh, out of excuses for your complete failure in life. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. R. Kelly got acquitted. Listen to me. R. Kelly got acquitted. How All right. Fuck Magic, did he get acquitted? Magic beat AIDS. And then there's a black president, okay? If you're not doing better, Keith, you're just not applying yourself. Uh, Michael Jackson <laughs> sticking it in every young fucking tush. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something, man. Here's how long, how, how long I've been a failure in this business. How long? I started out wanting to fuck uh, 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 Thelma from Good Time. <laughs> <laughs> Who's so left? I really got old enough for me to fuck her from the Cosby show. <laughs> Nothing. I think. <laughs> Who's next? You got there's no black chicks on sitcoms oh, no. right now. I'll be a grandpa. <laughs> We're actually just joking. If you ever get a chance yeah, to see right. Keith, Keith, <laughs> Keith is hilarious. And not only that, he has his own comedy room down there in Philadelphia. Might as well hype that. Keith, what is, plug your room. What is it? At, the room is done. I finished that room, stupid. What it's happened? What happened? I'm, I'm moving to LA to do Chocolate Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that, Keith? Why does every black night of comedy have to have some, like, silly little name? Oh, no, uh, uh, Fat Tuesdays. Yeah, it no, it's always Tuesdays. alliteration. It's always Tickle Me Tuesdays. <laughs> Manic Mondays. <laughs> wow Wednesdays. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't Saturdays. Hey, <laughs> Keith, actually, what, what was the name of your room? What? There's no way. Oh, I, I know because cause you, you're, you're a decent comedian. There's no way you gave your room a stupid name. Why would I? What, what's what? It's just called crazy, sexy comedy. <laughs> oh, you fucking asshole. I hope you crash into a pole. <laughs> crazy, sexy comedy. You should be fucking ashamed of yourself. Hey, Give me a fucking Heineken. Oh, you know what? <laughs> and you, you know what's funny about that crazy, sexy comedy? You know, he was trying to get that after work crowd. You know, oh. the, the upscale, like, no thugs. Keith, did you have an after party and a buffet? Yeah. Every, yes, we did. Did you have a street every team hanging out, hand, handing out flyers? That's we how. DJ. We sold out every week. Oh, that, that's why you're not doing it anymore? Yeah. <laughs> I just got sick of making all that's that money. How, Bill, Bill, that's how that's how you knew you were in trouble when you started out in comedy. When somebody said, I got a room, and you went out and you saw the buffet line when you walked through the door. I was like, ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you started comedy six weeks ago. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> Keith, I think I started in your room back in Philly. <laughs> Dude, who'd you have down there? Beefy, funny, and Tommy Two Smooth. All yeah, these people, nobody knows who the fuck I'm even talking about. What? Nothing but the best comic. Oh. Neal, Kevin Hart on the same show. Jerry Wilkerson, Will Sullivan. I was going to get Billy Barr, but he said he wouldn't. He wouldn't accept two fifty. I'll accept three fifty. Why didn't you book me, you cocksucker? All, all the and years God, we go back. Yeah, yeah, I don't like you, and you're not funny. <laughs> what else you need to know? <laughs> I can't believe you never booked me in that fucking chicken and rib shack. <laughs> he was. Keith was booking a Taz Steakhouse. <laughs> God damn you, Keith. I, I you wanted some. I closed the room down before I got you in, stupid. God damn it, Keith. I wanted some collard greens and some deviled eggs, too, after a set. You, <laughs> you couldn't bring Keith, me down? Keith has the most evil laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what though. Um, this is good. Let's really talk about my convention. I shouldn't even be talking to any white guy that's really been elected, actually. But okay. The, 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 the convention, man, is going to be good. It's going to be. You know, this is 45 years since I have a dream speech. Do you know that, DeRosa? Uh, nope. You I've never even heard of that. Well, who said that? Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez, you're both dumb white guys. <laughs> 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 Shut up. Shut up, you hack. You're a hacky black guy bringing up the Martin Luther King I Have a Dream speech. Give me another quote from that speech, Keith. I know, You Keith. soundbite jackass. Keith, can't you go Marcus Garvey? Something a little less fucking mainstream. You went right to the Beatles of black speeches. Oh, 
Yeah, and he sang the chorus. <laughs> love, love me do. <laughs> what? Did you just call Martin Luther King a hack? No, we called you a hack. Yeah, we called you a hack, Keith. You guys, you got no balls. That's your problem. What does that mean? <laughs> Show some fucking balls and go, yes, I did. No, we called you a no, hack. No, we called you a hack. We're going with honesty rather than a shtick. What are you, what are you bringing out, a puppet down to the club tonight, Keith? You want honesty? Yes. Uh, <laughs> He's going to hang up. I'm not going to hang up. I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it. You don't want to like your dumb radio show, and I don't like it. You got a good point. I can't, I, I can't argue with that. That's an excellent uh, point you made. Keith Robinson, the only reoccurring guest. <laughs> on, on informed. Hey, I wanna, Keith, I Keith. I want to be regular, man. Fuck this shit. I want in on this fucking radio money. All right. Well, all right. first of all, Keith, what, well, take advantage of all our 12 listeners. Let people know. What, what do you got coming up in your career? I got nothing. Now, move on. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, you're not doing another double headlining gig with Lynn Coplitz in Florida? Come on. Plug that. <laughs> I ended up making twelve grand for that stupid. No, you didn't. For your whole career. Now you really? First of all, out. Keith, if I you like made a headline of talk, uh, Keith, if you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to talk to you, Joe. You let Bill address me, and you ask Bill a question he'll relate it to me. I'm gonna you have Billy. I'm gonna have Billy notes, and then he'll ask you the questions exactly. that I want to know. I don't want to hear you, Keith. I, Keith, go. I've known you long enough to know that if you made twelve grand. In a night, you would not be working tonight. You would be at Best Buy with your fucking, fucking tongue man, hanging out. That short, grumbly voice really sounds like, like Batman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keith. What did he say, Vinnie Brand? Vinnie Brand's the uh, owner of the Stress Factory. Oh, uh, Vinnie, I can't wait until he's bringing you on stage and he goes, but first, and pulls out that stack of fucking... Prank call cards and goes through every single one. Hey, of wait them. a second. Do you think Keith has Bluetooth or he actually has his cell phone between his head and his shoulder? No, I can see him. He's holding it up to his face like this. This is he the does. way he drives. <laughs> like this. You have a Ford Focus. That doesn't come with Bluetooth. I don't have a fucking Ford Focus no more. <laughs> what is it, an Escort? No, Jackass. Well, what's the car black people always buy used? The Maxima. No, I have a Ford Edge. I the, have you got an Acura Legend? What do you have? Edge. An edge. I don't even yeah. know what the fuck that is. What is that? Of course you don't. Joe, that's you something. Don't know that's something you buy your daughter when she goes off to college. Yeah, well, yeah. Joe, Keith, Joe just, you don't know Keith, what that means. you're. All you do know is public transportation, Joe. Keith, your <laughs> Keith, mouth. you're driving a neon green Geo Tracker down Route 76 <laughs> right now, and you know it. I don't even believe that you're going to the stress factory. You're headed to the laugh house at best. I'm At best. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do a Paul Solari room right now. <laughs> All right, this is getting way too inside. Keith, we're going to have to wrap it up with you. What sick are you? Hype something. No, I, want I want to talk about the Democratic Convention. Okay. I got Brett Farr to talk about. Okay. I got more shit, bro. All right, all right. Let me pay off. Bro, I want to be on. Jesus Christ. Uh, right. Wait, let, let's get, let's, let him get to his topics. I think he's pitching at something. Let me get to my topics. All, All right, right, Keith, the Democratic National Convention is coming on. What do you have to say about that? Fuck both of you whiteys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> ah, fucking cocksucker. Oh, come on, man. There's no, there's no, there's no uh, phone conversation that doesn't end up with Keith hanging up on you in some time. That was the best. That was the best. So uh, you want to take a break and come back and do the president bits? Yeah, why don't we do that? We're moving into the uh, the final hour here of uh, Uninformed. We apologize, people. Uh, we usually have a uh, usually have a guest for the, for you guys. Uh, this is the first one we, we we never had a guest. We didn't have a guest for because uh, I don't know scheduling got crazy. But um, I don't know. Why do I keep apologizing for the show? I think Go it's mildly on. entertaining. All right, you're listening to Uninformed. We'll be right back. Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? You're listening to Uninformed. Danny, why are you playing I Drink Alone? Is because you're the only one drinking right now? Is that why? Baddy, baddy, doo. Joe DeRose's favorite artist. Yeah, and, and those three songs are the exact same songs. Bad to the Bone, I Drink Alone, One Burn, One Hey, 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 hey. Bad to the Bone is a, is a classic. Come on. But this one, he goes, I Drink Alone, blah, 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 bad. It sounds just like Bad to the Bone. 
No, he goes, I drink alone. He doesn't drink. I drink a little alone. <laughs> I'm saying the music, though. You don't think it sounds like Bad to the Bone? No. All right. Well, maybe the, I don't fucking know. Joe, what, what, what's your problem with fucking George Thurgood? I just don't care for him. That's all. Well, look, you know, he's probably playing a casino somewhere. Once again, he's like the comic that goes, I'm edgy, man, I'm dangerous. It, like, every song, it's like a parody of blues rock. You know what I mean? Every song is like, I drink and I fucking, I'm, yeah, I'm a mess. You know, like, it's just, I don't buy it. You know? Well, you know what? I would love to have him as a guest and you'd actually hear what the pain was, <laughs> what he went through. <laughs> yeah. Before he... No, it was really tough. Somebody, uh... Somebody bumped me at a stoplight, a little fender bender. I was you know, that's the classic, the that classic that thing that as, as a white guy that just meant automatically that you grew up like the, the Leave it to Beaver. You well, know, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, dude, like, come on, man, you've been on the road. You see all those white people living in those fucking trailer homes? Yeah. I'm not saying all white Tornadoes, people Tornadoes, and that's nothing, too. Tornadoes attack white people. Don't do that. I'm going to do the bit. Don't do that, dude. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> 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 Joe, what do you want from me? We're doing the Jerry Lewis telethon here. We got we don't have a guest, man. I'm gonna drag out some hacking. This is my question, Bill. How come hurricanes are never named after black women? Because if they did, they'd have even more <laughs> attitude. <laughs> Shebang. <laughs> All right. So let's uh And you know that hurricane be coming back. <laughs> <laughs> that hurricane be looking for excuses uh. to to rip shit up. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Because a hurricane named after a black person, that'd be a whole different kind of hurricane. <laughs> you know, a white hurricane be coming on the yeah. road. I hope I didn't mess things uh, up. Sorry about that. <laughs> black hurricanes paying be sagging. It'd rip up your town just be an hour late doing that shit. <laughs> oh. Whew. Jesus. Uh, I think we just did half a Keith sack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jesus Christ! All That'd right. be great, man. What's an, what's another genre of comedy? Everybody does the Seinfeld. We'll come up with something later. But let's, <laughs> let's get into a bit here. This is the final hour of Uninformed, the guestless Uninformed. We actually had to have uh, fucking Keith Robinson call in. Yeah. Uh, but here's here's a bit that we've been doing that uh, I have been getting a ton of emails <laughs> about. Um, <laughs> we basically uh, monologue jokes. For January 2009. Basically, you know, the, the, we're down to two people here mm -hmm. running for president. And, uh, you know, whenever somebody gets elected, the uh, late night talk show guys all do their uh, their monologue jokes. And uh, rather than try to write some of our own, we put a twist on it that we try to predict the future of what the monologue jokes are going to be like in 2009. And we're going to do, as always, our dead on impressions. I'll be doing Jay Leno from The Tonight Show. And uh, DeRosa, you will be doing... I will be doing Craig Ferguson. I was going to say Kurt Fletcher. I can never remember anybody's name. Okay. Uh, you want to go first, Joe? Uh, I kind of like when you go first better. But okay. If you, if you want no, me no, to no, go no. first. I, I, will, I, will go, I will go first. It takes me a minute to get into the Craig Ferguson voice. Oh, okay. You need so. to get... Okay. Method act. Okay. Here we go. This is, this is the joke. Uh, 2009, The Tonight Show. Uh, President McCain came under <laughs> fire today for his... For the lack of Asian members in his administration, uh, McCain responded by saying, "It's okay. I don't that I don't have any Asian members in my cabinet. I have a jar of their ears in my basement." <laughs> you see, he had a rough time in Vietnam. He didn't have a good time over there. <laughs> All right, ready? Right? That's a good one. That was terrible. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> oh. No, you got to start off. No, I'm doing it. I'm, doing it. I'm working into it. You know, folks, <laughs> McCain is so old and crotchety. He moves a bit like one of those robots you see in Disney World. You could put him on that Hall of Presidents ride alive, and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. He'd be up there going, I am the president. I am the president. <laughs> Please visit the gift shop. That was terrible. It's horrible, dude. <laughs> this boy. This boy. <laughs> I and told I, the first. I told the first half of that joke for real on a talk show. Uh, that sucked, dude. How embarrassing is that? Uh, judging by the sound of your voice, yeah, it's really embarrassing. <laughs> hey, uh, Bill Clinton met with uh, new president Barack Obama 
And the two became fast friends, sharing common interest in history, political change, and fat, ugly white women. <laughs> you see, he finger blasted that girl with the cigar. <laughs> The only thing that says my jokes is, is the banter over to that the, the band guy. All right, ready? Folks, Barack really isn't the first black president. He's mixed, you know, which is better in a way. He's a bit like a milkshake or a sundae. Chocolate and vanilla. Everybody knows the best ice cream sundaes are mixed. Put a little chocolate syrup on them and you got a delicious president. Mmm, Presidente. Yeah. <laughs> what? Come on. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. First of all, they're like nine. I said he's like a chocolate vanilla swirl. I'm just trying to do bad monologue jokes. They're just so predicted. hard. They're okay. hard to fucking They're actually, write. no, they, they really are hard. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, crazy times. You know, we're really living in uh, crazy times. And, uh, you know, R. R Kelly gets acquitted, Magic Beat AIDS, and uh, there's a black president. I tell you, if OJ gets his job back, I'm going to start tanning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tapping oh, out. Shit. I, I no, got... yours are good. Stop. <clears throat> All right, ready? Folks, now that McC <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite part of your joke. <laughs> Folks. Well, again, the only thing that saves mine is the pre joke. And yours are the after banter, so whatever. Anyway, folks. You need a tag, Joe. Now that McCain's... After it bombs, maybe I'll go back to Scotland. <laughs> now that McCain's president, he's made a few changes in the White House. First, they fixed Lincoln's bedroom with a craftmatic adjustable bed. <laughs> then they... <laughs> then they... Uh... <laughs> Just, yeah, there we go. Okay, there you go. Monologue joke, two thousand nine. Wait, 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 wait. John, it's, another, it's a monologue joke. It's not a fucking book. Another McCain. Another, <laughs> hold on. Another change McCain made. Was you sound, you sound like you. I'm trying. I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm getting like lightheaded from doing this accent. To be honest with you, another McCain change was that right in the Oval Office, right next to the button. You know the button. They installed a life alert. Let's hope he doesn't get those confused. Let's face it, if he's got a push. If he's got a push, either one. It's a bad day for McCain. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you please, please, <laughs> please say that? That is... <laughs> That was truly one of the worst bombs. That was one of the worst bombs I have, I have ever heard. Is there any way to play that back? Can you play it right now back on the air? No, I'd have to. Dude, you just... Nah, I can't. I have to stop. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. One more each? Or is that it? You no, dude. That? Fuck that. I can't listen to it. I can't listen. Okay, right. there you go. Monologue jokes, 2009. So another... That's what happens when we have a day to prepare. <laughs> another uh, oh, another wow. bit we thought to do... Quality control. <laughs> Just went through the fucking floor on those, Joe. That was a, that was a legendary bomb, man. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> you somehow, you somehow pulled it. That was like the best laugh. All right. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, it was horrible. I could feel it. I could feel it. Another. Uh, well, th this is another bit we wanted to do, right? Which was uh, it's sort of a play on. You know, we used to do what's going to keep you out of heaven. This is what's going to stop you from being president. What have you done? Oh, geez. You know, what, look, oh. now, now, now it can't be, it can't, it's not necessarily just what have you done. Because what, cause what's going to keep you out of heaven was, what have you done? Dude, if, you you, if you've even had like phone sex, the fact that they can record exactly. it. Exactly. What documented done? thing have you done? I know Bill and I tw talk quite a bit about porn. I mean, I'm finna, dude. The, the porn I have bookmarked on my internet. All they would right have now, to do if we I'm were, done. if we were running for president, all they would have to do is just take those audio clips. Of when we were just doing the bad black comedy with the the the, the black hurricane, and you yeah. just you just don't do the setup. Al Franken, like whatever he was running for, he had to like do public apologies because they drudged up like some of his old comedy bits where he was like making fun of women or something. First of all, you never apologize for once you apologize, then you're done. on oh yeah, on some level you you're acting you're saying like you meant it. Yeah, you're done. And you, what you should say is. All you got to say is, look, I'm sorry that you decided to take comedy seriously. The most, the most fucking gangster, politic, political. He didn't win, dude. Fucking Hulk Hogan won, or uh, fucking. I don't even know what he was running for, dude. Uh, or no, was it Jesse the Body won? 
He's here's the problem with him. He's too dangerous of a liberal. Like even the Democrats, he, uh, you, you know, he's the guy where you're like, all right, dude. Oh, the and, fuck he, and down. you know, you know what means dangerous? He actually wants to get things done. Yeah, he's like real hardcore. Like you know what I mean? But the most fucking hardcore po political, you know, whatever. I don't give a fuck. When I worked for the Senate in Texas, the lieutenant governor of the that Senate always blows my mind. Did you know that, Danny? No, I didn't. he worked after that horrific bomb, right? And you're just thinking, this guy, like, what the fuck is with this guy? Like, he, he's out of his mind, the stories he's telling. He worked for the Senate. Yeah. What did you do in the Senate? I was a reporter for the Senate, for the media department. I used to do, a, I used to do an internet radio show every day uh, that recaps. So how come we don't bring those skills here? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. Did you just... write any of your comedy on there? <laughs> no. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I had to... <laughs> You know what I gotta bring in? Fuck! I gotta. I can't believe I never thought to bring this. Do we have a tape deck here? Can we play a tape? <laughs> no, no, tape this is deck? satellite radio. It's yeah. not fucking 1987. We. Can, but is there any way we could play something if it was on a cassette tape? Yeah. How many not different here. generations to... of technology would you have to go through to bring <laughs> to resurrect an eight track eight track tape? And then we'll tell you we don't want to do it. We changed our minds at the last minute. I could probably we could probably do it across the street and convert it. Well, this is the point. I have a on, I have a cassette tape of all my outtakes for my radio show because I would record the internet radio show and then post it. It wasn't a live thing, and it was the last thing I had to do every day. And these were really long days, 12, 13 hour days of just like. And it was all I was swamped. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. It was brutal. And the last thing I had to do before I could leave was record my little recap show of what happened that day in the legislature. And I would try to rush through it to get the fuck out of there and get home. And I would fuck up so much, and I saved all my best outtakes of me freaking out. Wait a minute, you, you did an internet radio, I mean, what was that, two years ago? I mean, how long has internet radio shows been around? No, dude, it was 2001. Jesus Christ, you were like one of the first settlers. Did you, you, even, did you even have any, like, sort of competition? Was it you and no, one other was, guy? it was on the website for the Senate. I mean, it was an in-house thing. It wasn't like... You know what I mean? Do I have, like, Alzheimer's? When did, like, internet radio shows actually start coming out? You know when it was, dude? You know when it was, Bill? Right when Roadrunner and cable internet and all that shit started to become, like, common. Like, when people actually started getting Wait, what am I thinking? I remember 10 years ago when I lived with Bobby, he would, he would show me horrific porn pictures. Yeah. When we lived together. We used to watch TV, and he'd find the most horrific thing ever, and, he'd, and I wouldn't be paying attention. He'd turn the, yeah. the computer around and he'd just go, hey, Burr. And I just go to look over him. It'd be like some grandmother with her legs spread. <laughs> <laughs> but look, the point the point is is that the lieutenant governor at the time he was at some sort of fundraising. Dude, front. this is a whole other side of you. Yeah, the lieutenant well, governor. He was at the, some fundraiser or something. What does that mean, by the way? Uh, he's the the governor. What I learned was was that the lieutenant governor. He's the guy that runs the Senate, basically. The governor is just a face man. The lieutenant governor is the guy that really has like the power. The lieutenant governor decisions. is higher than the governor. No, in stature he's below the governor, but the governor is just really the face man. The, the lieutenant governor is he the just one reads that really, the shit exactly. Yeah, exactly. Which is what it. I think happens with the president. I don't think the president really is doing anything. You know, he's see, just now why he's the face man? See, there you go. You're you're just, you're a little bit on my page. I am. I am a little bit on your page. But okay, let, this guy at, was at a fucking fundraising party, and. A, it, it got out to the press that he said to a reporter or something, he goes, I'm tired of all the illegal immigrants coming in from Mexico. They're clogging up our hospitals. And he said all this shit. And he got fucking slammed for it, right? Slammed. And he had to have a press conference one day after the legislative session about what he said. And somebody goes, Lieutenant Governor, do you regret the statements you made about illegal immigrants? And he goes, no, I said it. I don't know if I should have said it or shouldn't have, but I don't look back. I don't regret things. I'm moving forward. That's it. And I was like, God wow. damn. Like this dude, that's the way you fucking and do it. That's how you do it in Texas, man. You yeah. win there. Yeah. You need to walk out with spurs on. <laughs> and everybody's like, Wee! But I was like, that's how you got to do it. You're saying don't apologize. The minute you yeah. go, I shouldn't have said, you're fucked. You're fucked. Yeah, no, yeah. You're fucked. You know what? The, and in a weird way, what that's like, that's like when Seinfeld ended his sitcom. And then all, everybody's, you know, trying to, you know, put the pressure on him to follow himself. What are yeah. you doing now? What are you, you going to plan for a show? He's like, no, no. Well, what, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? He's like, oh, you know, I don't know. Nothing. Hang out. Do some stand-up. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Walked away and left them, like, mouth agape. Yeah. Then they actually had to work. They had to write an article. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
That guy said the smartest thing, dude, in an, in an interview about that show. I saw an interview with him and Gary Shandling, and they said... I they, love Gary Shandling. Yeah, he's the best. And they asked them both. They go, you both walked away from your TV shows when they were at their peak. You could have went longer. Why didn't you? And Seinfeld goes, because sooner or later, the show will destroy you. He goes, it's not about getting to the highest point in the mountain. It's about bailing before you get to the highest point, because once you hit that highest point... You're coming back. What did down, he mean by it'll, 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 it'll destroy you? He was saying he said it could only be good for so long before the integrity of the show is compromised in a certain way because they run out of ideas or whatever it is, or the writing's not as good or whatever. And the same, everybody that built you up will tear you down. And he said you have to walk while they oh. still want more. Right, 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 right. So fucking smart, dude. So hard to do. Jesus Christ. Could you imagine that, dude? If you were. Dude, as much as I say, like, dude, if I had 500 million bucks, man, you'd never see me again. Right. You know, I guess he still does stand up, like. But I mean, I, mean I, I, I don't, I, like, I was saying to you today, like, I, I would say, arguably, you could actually say that Jerry Seinfeld did this business better than uh, Johnny Carson, who I thought did it up until the way I saw uh, right. um, Seinfeld walk away. I, I thought Carson did it the best. Right. He did it the best. He, he right. did it 30 years. Killed for 30 years. Right. And then had that the classiest, like, last week, all his favorite guests, and then he just walked. See, and, and he, he never came back, never did, like, a certs commercial or any of that crap. He just left, and it was Isn't over, and it was done. Yeah, it was great. I did a comedy festival in Norfolk, Nebraska. Right. And uh, we, we it, it's Johnny Carson's home. It's where he was born, whatever, right. where he grew up. And uh, they had this museum, Johnny Carson Museum, and they had this whole exhibit like dedicated to him and everything. Dude, they had a fucking picture of him from like two years before he died. It was the actual picture. Right. And I was just like freaking out looking at it because I was like, nobody saw this guy. Bef for what was he just hanging out in a... Yeah, he's a with his brother at like, they're sitting at a dinner table in like a house, just like laughing. Smile and I was like... Wow. I, so let me ask you, everybody has their dream. Like, what's, what's your dream? Uh, how are you getting out of this business? Obviously, you're one of the most legendary comedians ever. You got the huge movie <laughs> career. You won an Oscar, an Emmy, a Golden Globe, all that shit, right? Right. You got the trophy case full. Do you think you could walk away? Do you think you could do it? I would hope so, dude. I would hope so. You want to go out. I want to go out the way uh, Sinatra went out the first time he retired. You know, but then he came back, and his comeback was awesome. But, dude, his final concert... I saw Martin Short talking about this, and how he said it was the greatest thing he ever saw in his life, and I looked it up on YouTube, and I actually found it, and it's fucking awesome. Sinatra's last concert ever, he ends with Angel Eyes, which is one of his famous, you know, saloon songs. Right. He sings the fuck out of it, and the last line of the song is, excuse me while I disappear, and he just goes, excuse me while I disappear, and the fucking lights go out. And that was his wow. favorite concert. And then they come up, he comes out for the bows, and he's gone. And I was like... And everybody knew that was his last, last Yeah, it concert? was his farewell. That was it. And then, he, and then he came back. His comeback was awesome. The comeback concert at, the, at you know, Madison Square Garden. The stage was okay, set what, up what, like a boxing what, ring. What, what year was the... Uh, I think it's like 60, 70. He retired in 70. 70, something like that. He was about like, what, in his 50s at that point? I think he was like 60 when he retired. Because yeah, you know what's funny about that? The, all that type of stuff? Like, there was no roadmap for those guys as far as, like, those were the first TV radio stars. You know what I mean? Like, that's why, like, all, like, like Elvis is, you know, died in his 40s. Like, that guy never would have been dead today. Like, people would have been like, listen, man, you have a problem. All right? That's the fear, dude, is, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, w you're putting on weight. He would have got a personal trainer. They would have made fun of him in Us Magazine. But you think, like, he he walked around like a fat fuck for, like, four years before, you know? Like, they, his his face would have been all over everything. They would have catched him every time he went down to the uh, down to the beach. They Like, everything that they did to Britney, they would have been doing to him. Right. And someone would have tried to clean him up. But they didn't. And he just he just kept going with the donuts and the pills. Oh, that's terrifying. Yeah, just clogged up guy. his whole colon. I mean, come on, man. That would, do you want to collapse on a toilet? But do you want to do He's the first behind the music story as far as like millions oh, and millions yeah. of dollars and just ended up in Vegas and doing shitty movies and become fat. It's just it's fucking it's horrible. Do you want to end? Do you want to? I mean, my real dream is to not go out at all. My real dream is to become like Bob Newhart or Carlin 
or or Don Rickles, the guy that that goes through phases in his career where he's still relevant and he's still working and he's still doing it. Or Cosby. I gotta tell you this. I hope that when I get to the end of the line, I actually have a reason to quit. Like I want to quit because I want to spend more time with my wife. Like I, I want to watch yeah. the kids. I, I hope I have. I got a dog named fucking whatever shithead. I want to hang out with. Him. <laughs> That'd be nice. I just hope I like. I actually. I don't want to be that that fucking dude. That's, That's the thing, like, people listening, man, like, the, the amount of, like, seriously, man, like, comics that I've met, like, well into their 40s and in their 50s, and they're still in a fucking one-bedroom apartment, it's frightening. Yeah, that, that scares, shit scares the, the shit out of me. Alone in a, in a fight, that scares the shit out of me. You know who inspired me? I'm not fucking around when I say this. Uh, Nina Hartley, that porn star, she's, like, one of my, f she's, like, she could be my favorite porn star ever. I think she's so fucking hot. She's like 45 now or something. She's probably gaining on 50, actually. She started when she was fucking 19 or 20, made shitloads of porn. Right. And then she was like, when she started getting older, she started doing like these how-to videos and all this shit. And then she started doing the fucking MILF porn. And I saw an interview with her once, and she's like, it's fucking great. She goes, I just... I had no problem with getting older. I transitioned into the older women's stuff. I have a whole new fan base. My original fans are still with me. And I was like, even though it's porn, it's like there's somebody that knew how to work the career in phases. I mean, in, in that that's, business, is that's incredible. Yeah, exactly. But a guy like Nicholson, dude, to go from being the young fucking... Uh, impetuous, you know, that guy, whatever, to now play. Like, can you do your Jack Nicholson? I mean, this guy really should be playing Vegas. Danny, listen to this. Look, can, can hey, hey. <laughs> I'm trying Jack to do Nicholson, it. ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you one of the one of the staples of a radio show is you got you got to have the Billy West guy. You got to have the guy who can yeah. just imitate anybody. And we, we really got him. You're making Danny drink this whole six pack, by the way. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? How that guy like. He started out as playing like the young crazy role. No, I totally yeah, and he somehow transitioned like he like you know what's amazing about him for like forty years you 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 always wanted to be him you still want to be him. Yeah, now he plays the older guys. You know, he's the old mob boss or about Schmidt or whatever. It, that's fucking awesome, man. What do you think? Like the worst off the rails, like like just <laughs> did not like they keep the same hairstyle. It's almost like you know you know like like oh. the, the civilian. Wait, before you get into that, the civilian version of that. You ever see like the these moms who try to out hot their hot teenage daughters and they're, they're like literally wearing the same juicy fucking sweatpants and all that stuff and you just ugh. No. I got the worst. Whoa, Tony Curtis. Did you ever see that guy? No. Oh, dude, he shows up and stuff. He has the worst toupee, and and he wears like an ascot and a and a dinner jacket and but uh. he's still trying to be Tony Curtis. He's still trying to be like you know I enjoy the company of a fine woman and a glass of wine. <laughs> Dude, it's fucking hilarious. And that's like pre-fucking any sort of Botox, like uh, uh, Viagra. And you ever notice like how fucking old celebrities looked back then? Yeah. Like, you ever, uh, Dan, you ever watch like those Dean Martin roasts? No, actually. They were dusty. Oh, Lucille yeah. Ball. Uh, she looks like she, she works at a candy store. She was a fucking alky, too, so that didn't help. Oh, and she, she smoked was... a cigarette. She's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Dean Martin. <laughs> Dude, the... Uh, yeah, it's amazing how much older everybody is. You know who gets me bummed out is, uh, honestly, it makes me sad. When I look at Burt Reynolds now, Burt Reynolds was the fucking man's man, fucking Smokey yeah, and he, the Bandit. He, he didn't do it right. He does all you know, that fucking face work done, and he's like kind of a priss now and shit. It's like, what the fuck happened to him? Dude, there was nothing better than watching those old Tonight Shows. Where they had him on, they would... They... He should have gone out like Sean Connery. Like, he should have never gone yeah. the, the toupee route. Just if you if you have that, those kinds of fucking looks, man, just ride it out. Connery's know? another perfect example of, like, you just work it in phases. Yeah. I'm this guy now. That's, ah, uh, God damn it, man. De Niro did that. Even though his, you know, his movies haven't been great lately, but I mean, he, he, yeah, but he knew when to stop playing that tough guy, and he's just yeah. like, all right, you know what? I'm, I'm sick of gaining forty pounds and dropping twenty to play stuff, and then, you know, I'm gonna do some comedy now. But wait a minute, what about, what about they, they got a movie coming out, right? Him and uh... him and Pacino. I'm psyched about that. I, I'm more psyched about this though. I read an interview with with De Niro. It's a new segment. What is Joe psyched about? <laughs> uh, I read an interview with De Niro, and they asked him what. Do you think you'll work with Scorsese ever again? And he said, at least two more times, I have a movie coming out with Scorsese in 2010.
and I can't talk about it right now. How fucking cool is that? Yeah. We're going to do another movie together. You know what that reminds me? I, I got I to gotta see uh, Casino again. That's one of my favorite Like that whole relationship between him, Sharon Stone, and James Wood. Yeah. I just, that whole, that Let's whole the tonight. dynamic of that, that, that fucking guy. That, you know who he actually is? He's the, he's actually the guy from the joke in Goodfellas. Where, you remember the joke that, that, that his mother tells? What, what am I going to say? That my wife two times me? And then he always says, you talk too much? It sounds better in Italian. And he goes, what, what does that joke mean? Well, it means like he's content what is to it? be he's, a jerk. He's, he's content, content to, to be, be a, a jerk. jerk. Yeah. And De Niro literally plays that guy. Just keeps taking her back. Ugh. Nick DiPaolo has that fucking painting that she made in a frame in his house. <laughs> It's not the real painting, but it's he has a print of uh, it in his house. Yeah, I love uh, this. Did you ever hear his radio show that he had, man? It was fuffs. Oh, no, nah, I'd it's like to hear it. Fucking great. I think he's back on, isn't he? He should be. He he got he got caught up in all that that uh, that that guy with the cowboy hat said all that shit. Uh, Don Imus or whatever. Don Imus tells a joke and then gets in trouble, and then apologized. Don Imus just said something else like outlandish, like two months ago. I think it's his, I think he's going for the YouTube crowd. Crowd. Uh. Cried cried Ooh, all right joe you want to know what i'm psyched about what's that bill the uh acdc has a new album coming out in october oh, i can't fucking wait yeah and i'll tell you why i can't wait because you know that's one of those things where you, you want it to be great and rolling stone was was freaking out about it it's, it's called black ice angus plays slide guitar on it on at least one track uh, they're, they're, they're all going back to the roots like i like that they put the, the word black in the title you know what I mean? They knew, like, let's call it Black Something, <laughs> and everybody will get excited. <laughs> the fact that the single's called Rock and Roll Train, like, that just sounds like an ACDC yeah, song. Yeah, the, the, the names of their albums are hilarious. <laughs> High Voltage, Let There Be Rock, Highway to Hell, yeah. Back in Black, Flick of the Switch, uh, yeah, Black Ice, Razor's Edge. If you want blood, you got it. That's a great fucking album title. But that song that's one of the best. isn't on that album. Yeah, but that's one of the best live albums ever. That's, that song might have taken the place as my new favorite ACDC song. Oh, it's a killer song. <sighs> Jesus Christ, dude. You know what? If I played that song during our drum battle, during the song part, just played something simple, rather than trying to play good times, bad times, <laughs> oh, what a train wreck that was. Are you, <laughs> are you excited for the new Metallica? I am. I know, dude. I sound, we sound like two kids in a tree fort right now. It's fun, though. I'm excited, and dude. He's coming out. He's going to be awesome. But they're doing it, too. They got Rick Rubin producing it. He, he's bringing him back to How the old school Metallica shit. How many people can he save? Shit. Dude. He's the, the, he's the Jesus. He's the Danny, Jesus of producers. Did you hear My Apocalypse yet? The Metallica single? Yeah, I heard that one, and I heard uh, The Day That Never Comes. How sick is My Apocalypse, dude? I mean, it's fucking old school Metallica, dude. To be fair, I only heard it once. But I heard the other one a little more. The day that never comes, I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of on the. It's like all right. It's not like great. It's not bad. That's classic, like you know, pothead metal speak. Like the thing that shouldn't be. That's a Metallica song. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, this one's the day that never comes. <laughs> the day that never comes. The first song in the album is called "This Was Your Life." It <laughs> I mean, it, it's... I'm psyched, dude. I think my apocalypse... Dude, The Day Never Comes is good. My Apocalypse is fucking sick, dude. They haven't done a song... I mean, they haven't played like this in easily... It's got to be 12 fucking years. Dude, I got Injustice for All. I was in the sixth grade or something when I got that album. But those guys, those... Is this it? Yeah. Let it play till it kicks in. I like it so far. You know they're going to open their tour with this one. Yeah. That would be great. All right. I say they're back. Fucking great. Yeah, sounds good. What the fuck? Do you, you know what's... Really? Well, I, you know what they're doing now? It's like they're just trying to... It, to me, it, it seems a little forced. Like they're trying to 
write Please. harder because that's what the people want. So it's not natural anymore. This and is... I also think that they there's there's straying away from the songwriting formulas that have worked for them in the past where they've they've used a lot of vocal based hooks in their songs and that's just something that they're not doing anymore. I don't think so. I Jesus thought that Christ. the day that never comes really was pretty melodic. Really formed in opinion. That was that was above this show, dude. The day that never comes and cyanide. That other song. The day that never <laughs> comes. It's just it's too fucking. It's it's some some B side off of the Black album. What about the for, thing that wasn't that man? You remember that? Remember song, that intro? And then the other half of the song, they're trying to like recreate some fucking some epic Orion interlude that's just never fucking it never formats. But Cyanide is a very melodic song. That's the I know, live but track the up on with no down, man. That was like <laughs> that was the one. Here's the what, thing, though. What if if dog was spelled C A T? Are Rick you Rubin, ready? Rick Rubin said in producing the album, he said, I want to make the Missing Link album. I want to make the album that should have been between Injustice for All and the Black album. And I think, I don't think that's them necessarily being like, we got to get back to, they're just, all right, let's all right. fucking make that's a cool fair, album. It's fair of you to say it, but there's a track on the album called The Unforgiven Three. Do we really need the fucking trilogy in effect here? Well, what's wrong with that? A lot of bands do. The because... chair that wasn't there. <laughs> Who ate my half a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Who left live at Rocky out? Point in Rhode Island? <laughs> <laughs> Battle of the Tribute Bands. <laughs> oh, dude, I love it. If you think you like Warren. These kids were trying to get me, these comics were trying to get me to go on this boat cruise. And they're like, dude, you got to come on this boat. I was like, why? And he's like, dude. There's a Tool tribute band, and uh, they open for a Rage Against the Machine tribute band. <laughs> and what'd you say? Uh, all those bands are still together, and they're alive. Yeah. Why don't you go see the real one? Yeah. I can see seeing the Zeppelin one. You know, whatever, is a goof or whatever. I can see that. I would, I mean, no offense and to they always, those They're always bands. named after songs. You no, want to go I, see the Crunch, man? Yeah, yeah. Let's go see Know Your Enemy, the Rage Against the Machine <laughs> tribute band. <laughs> And, like, no offense to either of those bands. I like both those bands, but I would get, like, kind of bored ten, you know, six songs into a, one of their real concerts. After Tool rips into the fifth song yeah, that, that starts nah. with a bass Dude, you know thing what? and six But, five but that's just because you're not into them. We're talking about tribute bands now. I'm just saying, well, like, I'm saying bands. I don't even, so I don't, definitely don't want to go to the That's the musician band. equivalent of, of doing a cruise but as a comedian. That's the joint, like, a tribute. You're just like, you know what? No one likes my songs. Why don't I play the songs <laughs> everybody else? Is this what you want to hear, you fucks? <laughs> That's not a knock at those bands. There's just very few bands that could keep my attention for an entire concert. ACDC, absolutely. Metallica, absolutely. Metallica puts on a great show. Best concert I've ever absolutely, seen. I've seen them three times live. Danny opened They've beer number two. Themselves every time. I got to be cool today. Huh? What band could keep your attention for that long? Besides the ones I just named. Well, the amazing thing about it, when you go to an ACDC concert is there's no ballads. They come out, yeah. kick your ass, and then they just continue doing it for two hours. Dude, by the end, you're exhausted. Then they fucking end with the cannons. Have you seen them live? Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Tell me about I it. I saw them back in, the, back, well, back in the day when they actually were like, considered a, uh, the older guys. I saw them on the, uh, the Who Made Who tour and the Blow Up Your Video tour. I saw them at, uh, where's the first place I saw them? I think I either saw them at the Providence Civic Center right. or the Worcester Centrum. I can even tell you who opened for them. Loud, loudness opened up. was a Japanese heavy metal wow. band, and they would sing in English. I think they would sing in English. I can't remember, but they were really like, you know, English was difficult for them. I don't know. Like it was, and it was really like a hair band. It was really it was really easy for them to follow them. So I saw them on that tour, and... Um, do you have any recollection I, what they opened with or any of that stuff? I remember them playing Shot Down in Flames, which uh. I loved because I thought that was totally obscure, that no one would know that song, and they played that. Um, That's a good word. Some loudness. Oh, my God. I thought that was a new ACDC song. I was going to be like, uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, they played Jesus this. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, dude. This, this, this is the shit that was on the radio. Oh. When I was that was coming up, <laughs> and I had no idea how bad it was. Fucking drive in. Are they from Japan? 
It doesn't sound like it, and then it's like that hacky bit. You can bring it down. Then like it's like that hacky bit, like in between songs, and they'd be like, "Oh, thank you for coming." <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but I can't. I can't. I was a really. Spirit. That was really offensive, but I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I literally went, "Oh, thank you." I think I stuck my teeth out too. I just did like a fucking. Yeah, that was really bad. I apologize. Any Japanese heavy metal fans That's out there? That was really hilarious. bad. But I mean, I can't do a Japanese. Restru uh, restaurant, restaurant, <laughs> <laughs> Japanese accent. Because uh, I was literally thinking that you know sometimes when I order sushi they actually talk like that. The um, what you just tell? So what? what, the, you what about the second show? Can you remember what they opened with on the second show? That's what I get excited about is what the opening song was. The second time I saw him, I saw him in the Boston Garden, uh -huh. and Cinderella opened up, <sighs> which was considered a great show. Well, like yeah, Cinderella, at the time, Cinderella, sure. yeah, they, they were respectable. You That's know? way better than loudness. Shake me! Yeah. Remember that? You don't know what you got! Yeah. Till it's gone! <laughs> Oof. They sucked. Uh, you know what? For a lot of the bands that were around back then, they didn't really. <laughs> they, you could have sucked a lot worse than that. It's not like you sucked, you just didn't hold up. That, that's such a shitty thing to do because I liked them. And then now you're going to sit there and look back like, you know, when I was sitting there, you know, wearing my fucking unbelievably tight acid wash <laughs> jeans uh. then you know because they're frozen in time because they were on camera now i can step away like i didn't like i didn't go see them i was psyched that they were open i'm oh dude cinderella's open i, I was uh. literally psyched drinking heffin refers on the way in <laughs> and uh what did they i can't remember what they opened up with but it was it was way better than their other show just because it was in the boston garden which was, was just this great venue old school hockey barn man where you were just on top of whatever was going on and um yeah angus was the shit i was hammered i grabbed some girl's ass and she fucking punched me in the head that's great yeah and uh, they had like those tight fucking stretchy pants that are coming back oh, that's hilarious the who was <laughs> the who it's not like i just grabbed her ass i actually talked to her and i thought that we had a moment and she i evidently didn't had no idea i didn't even been talking to her <laughs> it's one of those deals i was like next to her i have a similar story i was at a megadeth show and uh what year it was uh, it was actually right after September 11th. It was so, like it was only a few months they later. Had, they had Megadeth era. Really? You went? You're shitting on the new Metallica. Stuff. You went to see Megadeth? Sure did. In that period? <laughs> sure did. Yes, sir. Yeah, but they played. But they played a whole lot of you know of the, what you wanted to hear. All right, fair it enough. Was, they play, dude, it was a great show. Their last really was, really was all right. That song "Kick the Chair" was all right. Yeah, it was all right. What do you guys think about reunion bands though? I, I'm into Isn't it. I saw Genesis with Phil Collins last year. It was fucking great. I love them, and then I also hate them because they just remind me how old I am. I'm just like, ugh. They came that was right like today out. On, on Opie and Anthony, like, Jim Norton was saying that that guy who played Fredo. You mean like a month ago on Opie and Anthony? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a month ago. I'm sorry. He was saying uh, the dude who played Fredo, not only is he dead, yeah. he died at 70. I'm like, that guy, that, guy, to, that guy to me is like 50. Wait, Fredo from The Godfather? Yeah. Died of, like, some sort of cancer or something. He didn't die at 70. He died right after The Deer Hunter. He died really young. Yeah. You, oh. you, I think you probably misheard. In, in, in the 70s, it was probably more like Oh, he died in the 70s. Yeah. yeah, he died, like, right after The Deer Hunter. Probably he died, like, 79. Big actor All right, let me get myself out of this. But if he lived, he would have been 70, <laughs> which blows my mind. <laughs> Um, you know how off-topic we Wait, what got? was your Megadeth story? Well, yeah, like I was going to say, because Bill had that uncomfortable where he thought he had a moment with this chick. The whole concert, <laughs> there is this, there is this, like, Spanish guy who's kind of like... Hang on, well, that would be such a fun, that would be such a funny moment in a trial to defend yourself for groping. I, I thought I had a moment. <laughs> I felt the vibe. I mean, I don't know what, what you want. You were connecting, you know? You, know? you take but, a shot. I'm there, sorry. Go ahead. There's this guy, and he's kind of like headbanging like behind this girl, and I, I thought they were a couple for a while until I kept, I kept noticing her kind of like like annoyingly pushing him away. And I, I just I thought maybe she just wanted her boyfriend to leave her alone. She's trying to enjoy the show or whatever. And then it just kept happening so much, I went over to her, and I just went, is this guy with you? Right. And she just shook her head no. And so for like the last half hour of the show, I was like protecting her from this fucking perv who was trying to like, you know, just grind up against and her ass. please tell me that you ended up fucking being a pervert by the end of it. No, the show ends and I expected to, to get a fucking thank you or say, oh, hi, my name is. And she just fucking walked out of Irving Plaza like I was a fucking stranger on the bus. Because you know what? You protected Jeez. her in kind of a creepy way. Rather than knocking that guy out like some I, sort I was, of action hero, you said, oh, let, let, let me protect you. you oh, I didn't put my arm around her. Oh. I just kind of, I, I just blocked him from from access to her behind. 
So he couldn't grind up All against right, you, her. You want to hear when my karma came back on me for grabbing that girl's ass when I thought I had a moment? Years later, I was, I was dating this girl, and uh, she was doing some sort of musical theater thing, and it was some sort of benefit. Uh, I can't remember what the fuck it was called, but it was one of those things that was just one of those deals that no straight guy would ever go to it unless you were dating one of the girls in the show. So I show up to the thing. Dude, it's just wall-to-wall -wall gay guys, right? And and like it was women, but they were all like, woo, into the show, and then all these gay guys. Like It was, it was like this bro Broadway Bears. That's what it was. Like They, they go out and they kind of do like strip tease kind of shit. And uh, like, oh, it's, it's, it was really bad, dude. Right. It was a fucking cock fest. So I'm standing down there, and... Uh, you know, I'm waiting for her to come out at, like, the end of the show. And this guy, literally, he kind of bumped into me. And I said, oh, oh, you know, I said, hey, sorry about that. And he goes, yeah, it's no problem. And he fucking patted me on my ass. And, dude, the fucking, like, I, I didn't know. I, I was a little, so stunned. I Like, he punched me in the face. I would have reacted because right. I've, I've had that happen. But he fucking patted me on my ass. He gave me, I think he gave me two. He gave me one of those. <laughs> it's okay. Like, sweetie. And I literally turned around like I was, I, and I fucking choked in the moment. Like afterwards, like I was thinking all the shit I should have said, like, hey, not everybody's fucking gay here, buddy. You know, <laughs> I totally choked in the moment. This guy patted me on my ass and I didn't fucking do anything twice. Little pat pat. That's karma. There you go. Yeah. Comes came back. back around, yeah. So yeah. came back and got me. And I was, and that was the way I got over being pissed at it. I was sitting, I can't fucking believe that, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, oh, wait a minute. Boston Garden, 1988. Cinderella's yeah. opening. You grab some girl's dance skins yeah. over there. I didn't even do that. I sort of put my hand on that part of, like, I put my hand around her, her back, that part that's kind of back and kind of uh, hip sort of ass. Like, you know where, like, you can lay down and you're in Arizona, Colorado, and New Mexico? That's where my hand was. <laughs> Dude, this is how fucking horny I am. I was just getting horny picturing... The gay guy touching you, Bill. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Picture it like pat a hand my ass. going around like a girl's ass and the tights and everything. That actually, uh. Joe, have a beer, man. <sighs> just have a beer. Let's go out tonight. Yeah. We'll Here's fucking... how off topic this show I'm has gotten. Commercial fish, Joe. We'll go out there. Just anything that'll fuck you. Do you guys understand? <laughs> Cast a wide net. I'm gonna go to a fucking geesh tonight, maybe. <laughs> this this break started with what's gonna keep you from being president. Oh, dude, oh, we, did? We, uh, we did that for 10 <laughs> seconds. You, right, well, you we'll didn't give, even do it for 10 we're seconds. We're giving examples. <laughs> so usually, like, you know. Oh, by the way, one for you, that Japanese impression you did about 10 minutes ago. Oh, <laughs> oh thank you. Man. Oh, that was so bad. <laughs> yeah, that, the black girl impression I was doing earlier. <laughs> oh, sugar. And you know what's <laughs> funny? Like, how the, those are offensive, yeah. but, like, you know, the white guy thing. Oh, dude, look, look. If we were actually, like, well, you're kind of half Egyptian, right? Yeah. So you're not, you're not really part of the exclusive. Whites only club, are you? No, you're not. No. Oh, okay, so do you get do you get offended with the uh, what? What's the hacky Egyptian accent? Is it just the? Uh, no, my friend, the, the, the. which like is that, actually that jerky which is thing. actually India, right? They talk like that in India. I guess so. I don't know. I don't get offended. I don't give a fuck. I'm Tarmash, the Egyptian magician. Those those old calls. We were talking about that today, dude. Those old fucking jerky great, boys man. calls are fucking classic. Classic, dude. That first tape. That very first tape. That. Dude, the, the the most brilliant one ever is uh, the super across the way. Uh, that one's <laughs> Just so how any who the super across and the guy literally like listens. I could do the whole call from uh, memory. Can we do it? No. Oh, actually, you know what? You've been doing so many bad impressions. <laughs> let's let's see you do it. Hi, right. hello. Let me speak to Brett Weir. Who's calling? Look, jerky. I don't need to talk to nah, you. Nah, you already fucked it up. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. What is it? Oh, go continue. Look, jerky, I don't need to talk to you. You don't need to talk to me? Get Brett Weir, I said. No, you missed it. What? You missed the line. He goes, yeah, let me talk. Let me speak to Brett Weir. Okay. And then he said, the guy says something to him, and he just goes, is he in? And he goes, I, I, who, I, listen, jerky, right. I don't need to talk to you. And then it's Brett Weir, I said. So you All can't right. do the whole call. It's over. Well, face. In your face, <laughs> motherfucker. You fucked up on the second line. You know, you know where you went wrong, I Joe? Think, I think you're wrong, to be honest with you. Really? You might be. Why Do we you, have why it? Why don't you fucking look it up? Oh. Do we have it? Uh, Who's ever huh? wrong has to take a sip of the beer. Oh, yeah, that's it. How about that? Oh, okay. All right. So, so, just, so we're square here. I say it's, let me speak to Brett Weir. Who's calling? Look, jerky, I don't need to talk to you. Yeah, he you says, is he in? Me? Right there, he says, is he in? That's what I'm saying. Fuck. Here we go. Do you really want to? Do you really want to not? You you want to win? 
No, I want to. I no, I yeah, I want to win. I don't want to sip the. I honestly don't want to sip the. I think you. Fuck, you might be right. I don't know. You know what's, the, what's the name of the track? Do you know? Super, Super across, across the, the way. way. Here we go. Someone's gonna lose their chip. All right, you ready? Their AA chip. Here we go. Is there booze in that fucking lasagna? <laughs> booze. One moment, please. Andy, may I help you? Yeah, let me speak to Brett Weir. Uh, who's calling? Is he in? Bam! Yeah. Oh. Drink up, motherfucker! Now hold, on. <laughs> now, hold on a second. Hold on. Does it count? Do we both get disqualified? Because the first line of the call is, yeah, one moment, please. No, no, I was talking. I said you messed up the call. That's all I said. You were the one who said you could do it perfectly. And I said you messed up and you missed that line. That's right. Drink up. I said I'd have a sip of beer. Huh? Relax. Yeah. So what are you gonna, not going to finish it? No, I'm not going to finish it. I'll tell you what, Joe. If, if you finish. fucking chug that whole thing, I'll, I'll drink two. Oh, here we go. If you chug it straight. If I chug this down, you'll what? I'll, I'll fucking drink two of them. I'm serious. Are you serious? I'll do it if you do it. Yeah. All right. But I can try to make you laugh while you do it. No, fuck that. <laughs> well, no, there's no. got to be some sort of... Joe, you're an alcoholic. Any fucking person <laughs> could do that by their fucking <laughs> sophomore year. <laughs> by, your, by your sophomore year, anybody can do that. You can't make me laugh. Come on. Okay. Because I'll spit it All everywhere. right, Joe. You know what? I'm not going to make you laugh. Go ahead and do it. All right. I don't, Go ahead. I don't know if I can do it, to be honest with you. I'll try. Go ahead, Go ahead Joe. Right. Last thing I'm going to do oh. is try to make you laugh. Here we are, not making Joe laugh. Joe DeRosa. He's turning his back. He's already laughing. <laughs> Stay near the microphone. We have time for this, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Joe DeRosa. All right, I'll He's taking the beer. To, I, yep, yep. Now, just for the record. Oh, would you stop with the record? I'm not doing my normal Joe shit. I'm not talking shit. I don't know if I could do this right now. I'm I know you're not. Know. I, I just want you to, to laugh and spit it all over yourself so I don't have to drink. Joe, just don't laugh. All you got to do is just finish it, man. All right, come Bottles on. Let's count here. off. Come on, Mike. You can't have four. Okay, to get ready. five. I can do anything I want. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Joe, look at this. Joe, look. Hi, 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 hi. Joe, look at my asshole. He's not going to make it. Joe, look. Come on, spit Joe. it out. Joe. Noonan. Look at my Noonan. asshole. Look at it. Oh, my God. He's got his ass out. <laughs> Joe, look at this. Look, we got to go second grade. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna do it. No, he isn't. Yeah, he is. He's not chugging it. You He's sipping it. Asshole. Oh, you motherfucker! He finished it. Fuck. <laughs> God Go for damn it, Bill. it, Joe. Well, there goes my sobriety. <sighs> oh. You pussy! Stop making those right, noises. Open beer. one for Bill. Well, fourteen days down the fucking tubes. You know what sucks is I had I I, I won the bet. <laughs> Can you please cough the way you are? Get on the mic, Joe. Jesus Christ, you look like... <laughs> you look like you dude, just... chugging is the worst thing. It's disgusting, dude. I hate it. You look like you just drank Drano. God <sighs> damn it. I was going to beat your record. I feel like I'm going to puke. All right, we got to stay on the air. Right. Joe... He's going to puke. He's going to puke. <laughs> <laughs> I can't... You're the only other person who would get that reference. <laughs> Vince McMahon, beyond the mess. He's going to puke. And the best part is, is the guy doesn't puke. He's nowhere near puking. And Vince McMahon just has to keep saying at the table, he's going to puke. Oh, look at him. He's going to puke. <laughs> the ultimate showman. All right. Cheers, guys. Uh, we, should we wrap up on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. First sip of beer. And uh, I'll be full-fledged Alky next time we come back. Uh, thanks for listening to Uninformed. Joe DeRosie, what, do we know when this is going to air so we can hype our shit or no? Uh, huh. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Let's see. Well, in the meantime, we can we can plug the fact that... Let's go October 4th. If you're listening to this, it's October 4th. Oh, October Joe, this is 4th. fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is the this first, good? The first few sips before like before it started to fill up my stomach <laughs> were really good. This is so good. <laughs> hey, anybody out there, anybody out there has a drinking problem, I'm telling you, take two weeks off. And then get a Heineken. I could do a Bro. fucking commercial for them right now. I'm so glad that I got the both of you drinking again. <laughs> I was hanging oh, out. Very proud of myself. I was hanging out with two comics, and one of them was sober. I, I won't say his name because I don't know if he wants people to know that or whatever. Right. But one sober, and we're at a bar, and the other the other guy gets a drink, a gin and tonic, uh -huh. and he sips it, and he goes, "Dude, you you gave this up? 
so delicious. Why would you do that? <laughs> like, like it was the fucking meanest. Like just reducing the guy's problem to a t to a taste choice. Yeah, who doesn't like cake? Yeah. <laughs> delicious. All right, we got to wrap this up. Uh, I think we're going drinking. Oh Jesus! No, come on. All right. I never thought yummy after I drank a beer. <laughs> That's fucking delicious. God damn it. The All people right. at Heineken. God bless well, you. Let's plug this. In October, we're going to be together at the at, in uh, Austin, Texas. What's that gig we're doing? Oh, we're going to be doing Late October, the, uh, the Cap City Comedy Club. Yes. Mid-October. And you know what? Uh, this is for the Texas people. We're going to a Longhorn game down there when you guys play Missouri. And Joe, yes. I'm taking you. And that'll be a great segment because you don't know shit about sports. All right. Thanks for listening, Uninformed. Good. And uh, we'll be back again next month. And plug your DVD in the special. Oh, that's right. Wait a second. Yes. I got a, I got a DVD CD coming out called Why Do I Do This on uh, September 16th. So uh, if that's already out, please go out and buy it. <laughs> yeah, and, and my, uh, my Comedy Central half hour uh, presents will be out sometime. Oh, God, this is good. Sometime Jesus around now Christ. or in the next month Didn't or ben two, Franklin's something like that. And oh, it, yeah, Joe taped a half yeah, hour special. Yeah, so look out for that. That's coming soon. I heard you killed it. it was Congratulations, fun. man. All right. I'm proud of you, Joe. Hey, thanks, Bill. All right. All right. See you guys. See this concludes Saturday Night Virus. All right. Well, that sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony show five days a week, live on satellite radio, online on your phone or tablet, or even on demand, go to SiriusXM.com. Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony show on Twitter, at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton.